Good afternoon and welcome to Vito Capizzo Stadium for NCTV 18's presentation of Nantucket Whaler football. Can you believe we're here, Dick? It's unbelievable. Yeah, this is a uh, it's a fun day here on the island. There's four other games going on, but just seeing the kids back out running around on the field is super. I'm Chris Morris, and we all know who this is, the Dick, legend that is Dick, Dick Herman. Dick Herman here. And we're happy to bring you live coverage of the Nantucket Whalers as they uh, host the Dolphins of Dennis Yarmouth for the first game of the 2021 football season. Our pregame report today is brought to you by Nantucket Bank. Nantucket Bank proudly supports the broadcast of Nantucket Whaler football. And we're about uh, seven minutes away from kickoff. A beautiful day out there. It's a great day. Uh, they, September's one of the best months on the island, and, and part of it ties into the weather, but more important, opening of the football season. And it is fantastic <laughs> that we are playing football. You know, right. last year was a funky year, and uh, as I talked to Coach Perry, he was happy to just get forward and get to this point. Uh, but before we get to our pregame show, Dick, I, I need to take a moment and acknowledge the fact that uh, it was 20 years ago today that uh, the world, as we know, was changed. The attacks that took place in 2001 uh, took the lives of many Americans, and, and that will never be forgotten. Uh, heroes on that day and the days that followed uh, sacrificed their time and some even their lives and their memories will live on forever, uh, as will the 9-11 and you have a little story. Yeah, I'd like to just add to that. Uh, my first game uh, on TV was the old Channel 3, which we were back then. Yeah. And that was back in 1986 when I left coaching and tried TV for a year, and I'm still doing it now. But my first partner was Chris Worth. Yeah. And if okay. anybody read the newspaper this week, Chris Worth was in one yeah. of the Twin Towers, uh, and he was one of the lucky ones that yeah. got out. And, Amazing story. But, uh, he, he, he still has a, a lot of reaction about it. Sure. It took him 10 years to even get the thought out of his mind and go back and, and take a look at the uh, place where it happened, where he worked. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a tough day. Uh, tough for the country, and it's still pretty tough listening to some of the stuff on TV this yeah, morning. It's crazy. Uh, but let's get to some football. What do you say? Football! There we go. <laughs> uh, so it's a special kind of excitement for the first game. Obviously, Nantucket looking to get back to their winning ways after a slightly disappointing uh, season last year cut short with a couple of games canceled of course the island cup was one of those uh, that abbreviated season but uh, a lot of returning players 13 starters or uh, active players and 16 seniors uh, on the squad for uh, coach joe perry now in his fourth year and actually i was uh, able to catch up with joe earlier and uh, we did a little interview uh, that's going to be part of our segment every pregame so it's cool. going to be the NCTV 18 Coach's Corner. And uh, we can cue that up uh, and uh, get the interview with uh, Coach Joe Perry. Uh, but I got to say, uh, probably happy to put 2020 behind us. Uh, what, a, what a weird, strange year it was. And, and uh, you know, lost a couple games there at the end. Uh, how excited are, are you to, to get the kids back on the field and start uh, 2021 here? Well, we're finally back on the field, and I think the kids are really, really excited about it, and um, they've worked hard since July 5th. Yeah. Not conditioning sessions, um, some good numbers there, weight room, some, you know, some good numbers, but it's a working community. We all understand that as a coaching staff, and yeah. you know, make money well, while you can. And Absolutely. And uh, now last year... We're excited you to have them on the field, and we got, we got some good numbers. And last year we had, uh, you know, no scrimmages. You were able to get one in uh, this year, which which has to help get at least some game speed for some of those kids, right? Yeah, it was a nice scrimmage, nice, nice tone to it. Uh, Well-disciplined team that came over North Reading. Yeah. Um, good scrimmage, get our feet wet. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. Now, uh, offensively, I – you know, there were some some bright stars last year and uh, looking forward to some some big play activity. You guys have some some talent at the key positions. Uh, who's who's standing out for us uh, this year? Who should we be uh, keeping an eye on? Well, first of all, you, you got to um, go back to Tim Saradell's offensive coordinator. He works around the clock for our offense and, and our program. Um, he's put some great stuff together practice plans and the offense we've moved it around a little bit we got some got some new bodies you're going to see justin again you know you saw justin yeah. last year 
Again, you'll see Makai. Makai has been moved out of the quarterback position, not, you know, um, not thrown out, but, you know, he wanted to go a little bit different direction for, for colleges. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, Carlos, Carlos is coming along great. You see Carlos on the basketball court. Um, JJ, Ben, you seen him on the basketball court. He's, he's going to be an end. Yeah. Again, so those uh, those skill yeah. positions. As the line is great. Vaughn Machado. Woo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Again, I think the big playability uh, is going to be something that our viewers are going to see. And, and uh, yeah, JB and, and uh, Carlos was feisty on the basketball court. I think he's going to bring that attitude to the offense as well. Um, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the that pistol T offense that you guys run has just a lot of options. So it'll be well, fun yeah. to fun to watch for sure. And Coach um, Bar Machado and Matt Rabb's got the offensive line dialed in. There's some big boys up there. Mm-hmm. You know. DJ Excellent. Francis back at center. Uh, Colby Sawyer. He's gotta be six six two, two seventy something. And there you go. That, Ryan that Downey. Big we got some guys there. That Tim is a big coming game. back. Yep. So excellent. Defensive well, wise. Greg. Defensive wise. Nantuck has always been a hitting club. And, and Mark Willette, yeah. the defensive coordinators, really put that together. And you know, we got some yeah. talent, we got some talent there. Yeah, if you take away the Mashby game from last year, I mean it was stout. Uh, you know, didn't give up a whole lot of big plays, even and and certainly the points. Uh, again, minus that 33 to nothing thing, um, yeah. you know, was was very impressive. Uh, and again, you've got, uh, you know, JB and Makai going both ways. So, you know, the big play ability, not just stopping people, but uh, maybe turning it over and, and yep. getting it back the other way uh, right. can certainly happen. Um, you know, and uh, touch base a little bit. Uh, you got some special teams players coming back as well with cast. Yeah. And- Yep, Jeremy Cass, six seven. <laughs> I got my list here somewhere. Uh, Jeremy, what's Jeremy coming? A six seven two ten. So tight end. That, that's a that's a target there. That is a target. Yeah, all you got to do is throw it up to that kind of guy. JJ six six two twenty. So we got we got some bodies. We got some bodies definitely. Um, what do we say? Sawyer coming in at six two two eighty. So, you know, we got some guys just going to show almost, the spice of it. Yeah, almost next level type bodies already, you know. Uh, I mean, those are some big boys. Yep, some, definitely some big boys. And, you know, got just got to play every down the four quarters. Win your battle. Offensive defensively, win your battle. We should do all right. Yeah, that's almost an everyday preach, huh? Yeah, <laughs> well, it's going to be going to be yeah. today. Absolutely. Now, uh, D.Y., uh, anything, you know, obviously they, you know, had a good year last year, albeit short, um, you know, kind of won the Atlantic for whatever that's, you know, kind of worth. But uh, as far as a preview of what you know from them, anything? Uh, no, uh, D.Y. Or... is no, always a, a good program. Yeah. And definitely have some athletes. Cape kids always always shuffle around a little bit, different different schools and different sports. Um, so we're just going to have to focus on what we can do. Yeah. As a, as a coaching staff, um, definitely going to have to, you know, fourth down and, and three. Hey, we got to punt it then. Right, right. We got to play smart. Well, again, and again, it, it's nice to have a defense that you can. Uh, It'll also be nice to uh, play in front of the home crowd and actually have a crowd. Yeah, right. Huh? Yeah, there'll be a crowd there. So the Boosters Club had a nice big meeting yesterday. So I saw that, yeah. Things are, things are on, the, on the uptick. Absolutely. Well, it looks like the weather's going to be gorgeous as well. And, uh, again, we wish you all the best of luck through the entire season and uh, look forward to chatting with you here uh, every week as we uh, get it all set up for – for Whalers football in uh, our little coach's corner here on yep. NCTV 18. Thanks, Coach, for the time. Thank and, you, guys. Uh, look forward to it. Anytime. We'll talk.
We'd like to welcome you back to Vito Capizzo Stadium. I'm hanging out with Dick Herman, and we are getting ready to kick it off here for the 2021 Whalers football season. Uh, and as uh, we heard uh, Coach Perry, a lot of guys to watch for on offense, specifically Justin Blois and Makai Bodden. I mean, those two are going to be the superstars. And have to mention that there is a new quarterback, Carlos Aguilar, is going to take the snaps and hand it off to one of those two guys. But he is also nifty. I was able to actually commentate him on the basketball court, and I loved him. He was feisty, and I'm hoping that he brings that leadership and that energy to the football field as he's got the helm now. It's his team, so he gets to uh, run the show. And, uh, of course, Justin and Makai got to go to that uh, special AAU camp and uh, play against some really good competition. Uh, I got a chance to chat with both of them, and they were just – thrilled to be invited first of all and they are invited back again uh, after this season uh, but just what an exposure for those kids to, to play against some better competition um, you've got to play against some better competition but it was a couple years ago right <laughs> a couple years ago. well the, the big thing those, those two guys are going to be the uh, the bread and butter of the team yeah. the big thing though is the sophomore quarterback uh, remember he didn't play any football last year yeah. the last time the last time he was in a competitive football game was as an eighth grader. Yeah. Uh, another thing, these younger kids aren't getting the uh, exposure playing at the Boys and Girls Club anymore. They play flag football over there now. Yeah. Yeah. And so when they get here, maybe they get in as an eighth grader if they're big enough and tough yeah. enough. But some of them uh, don't get competition, don't get banged around until as a ninth grader. So you're putting a lot of pressure on a, a, a young, young sophomore yeah. who last played as an eighth grader. And again, so fortunately for him, he is surrounded by a lot of talent, so he really doesn't have to do too much. Hopefully he keeps it within his game, and hopefully Coach Saradellis, the offensive coordinator, will realize that and uh, have a game plan. You know, they run that pistol T, that wing T offense, so there's a lot of run-pass option. Right. Uh, it's a lot of timing, uh, so hopefully that will play out. And again, Coach Perry, when I chatted with him, every conversation I've had with him finishes with execution. <laughs> it's, you know what I mean? He just preaches execution. So. Hopefully all that practice turns into execution here uh, as the Whalers get set well, home for openers, first Home game. openers are always tough. Yeah. You, you, you don't know what to expect from your team. Yeah. You certainly don't know what to expect from the opposition because you don't really have a scouting report on them. What's difficult for Nantucket is they're jumping up a couple of divisions. They're in Division 7, yeah. jumping up to play a home open against D.Y. Division 5. Yeah. And speaking of D.Y., they are coming off a fairly successful year. Technically, they won their Atlantic uh, uh, Conference or Atlantic Division of the Cape and Islands League with a 3-1 and one conference uh, record. They are returning their quarterback, Ryan Fitzgerald, so we'll keep an eye on him. Wideouts David Azor and Jaden Moore, who are all, all, also both seniors. And all three of those guys are going to be playing both sides of the ball. So uh, much like Nantucket, they always we're always challenged with you know the amount depth. of bodies we got in depth. Depth. Yep. depth is a problem, especially when you get down into the lower divisions. You yeah. just don't have 22 plays to put out there. You're lucky if you have 13 or 14. So. Yeah. I will say I talked to uh, a couple other coaches, uh, Boab Domar, and he was. They had 30 kids going out for eighth grade football. So yeah. they ran out of equipment. That's, that's, <laughs> they had to call the club for some equipment. So that's, that's a good sign. That's a good sign in yeah. that many kids signing up, yes. Uh, so just getting back to DY real quick, second year coach, uh, Chris Marsh, tough year last year to start things off having to deal with COVID. Uh, but he does have seven seniors coming back. Uh, tough schedule for them. They play some big teams, Barnstable, Falmouth, and of course right here with our Whalers. Speaking of Barnstable, they knocked off Brockton last night, big time. I think yeah. it was like 52 to 38, Ooh. some crazy score like that. Wow. Uh, that's that's tough when you can uh, when you can beat a Brockton on opening day. On, and put up 50 points 50 any points. time is uh, definitely uh, a, a tall order for uh, this team. Well, the uh, captains are meeting over at uh, midfield here, so we should uh, be kicking off here very shortly. As, it, as we said, uh, NCTV 18's production of Whalers football. Uh, the pregame show brought to you by Nantucket Bank. And uh, I got to say, it's uh, almost time for us to get in the window here. We better. We better. We don't want to miss the kickoff. Been there and done that. Roger that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that went good. I'm going to keep it on if that's all right. I, you're good. I don't mind you talking. <laughs> All right, the uh, 
captains are out there. Nantucket's got uh, the home blues. The home blues on. A little bit of a wind factor today coming down the field, a little on the side. So Nantucket, I think, lost the toss. So DY has deferred, and Nantucket will kick off. They're missing From one of their left to right, so they will kick off with the wind and have the wind here in the first quarter. As we are set for the first game of the season here from Vito Capizzo Stadium, and as you can see, the boys are a little excited. Yeah, they they want to play a game. They want to play. Uh, it's. It's a long way from last year, even though last year was in uh, April. I don't think it ever felt like a uh, a season playing the football in April. I thought it was unique, but yeah, I, it was a little chilly. We had to go, uh, you know, because I did the radio last year. I had to go and uh, hang out in Monomoy outside, <laughs> no field house. So that was a challenge. But uh, other than that, it was. Uh, you mentioned Monomoy. You mentioned Monomoy, and they're not playing a varsity schedule this year, which is uh, going to cost the Nantucket the game. We are set for the national anthem. On this date in 2001, the United States of America was attacked in an unprecedented fashion, leading to the death of over 3,000 men and women in New York City, Arlington, Virginia, and Shanksville, Pennsylvania. At this time, we ask all to pause and take a moment of silence and remembrance for those who lost on this day in 2001. As always, Nantucket High School would like to remind all who are present today that they are expected to show the utmost respect for game officials, coaches, athletes, and their opponents. Please cheer appropriately in a positive, supportive fashion. Thank you for your cooperation and enjoy the game. At this time, we ask everyone to continue to stay standing for the singing of our national anthem. Today's anthem will be sung by Nantucket High School juniors. Natalie Mack and Julia Mark. Sounded like a duet to me. Was that? It, it, it did yeah. sound like there was more yeah. than one young two, lady two, there. Two young ladies singing that one. Uh, once again, I'm Chris Morris, Dick Herman on the call here from Vito Capizzo Stadium as we are set 
for Nantucket Whalers football. DY will receive. No. DY will be kicking off. No, they won the, yeah, DY won the toss, but they deferred. Gotcha. So uh, Nantucket they, receives the ball with the wind, though. Yeah, that was. Uh, That's that an was interesting strategy. Usually interesting. you kick with the wind. You know, but they want it in the second quarter, maybe. Yeah. We'll see if that plays out. <laughs> we'll see it, if that plays usually, out. You usually play a lot of games like that in the second half, you know, making sure you, you get the win when you want it, either third or fourth quarter. There's two theories there. One, yeah. have it at the end of the game. The other is to run your points right away and put the game away. But in the first uh, first half, you usually take the win right away. That's so right. then Tucker's going to have a break. This this ball may not get to the 20. Let's That's see. right. We'll see. It is Justin Boyce deep, and it is a very short kickoff fielded by one of the up man, actually fumbled by Jeremy Casp, and he jumps on it right away smartly at yeah. the 26-yard line. And we are ready for action. The 2021 campaign is underway here uh, for the Nanteca Whalers, and our first quarter's coverage is brought to you by Dune Bar and Restaurant. Open nightly, year-round, and conveniently located right down on Broad Street. Michael Getter and his crew always doing deliciousness. I, I love it. I, I, I haven't eaten there this year. Last, okay. year, I went, last year I went there for our, our anniversary in August, but there we uh, we plan to get in there this fall. Beautiful inside, too. Yeah. Nice job over there. I, uh, I enjoy the dune. All right. Well, as usual, those whalers are in the shotgun formation. Carlos Aguilar in the backfield. And he looks to throw right away. It is a high pass, excellent one-handed catch by Makai Bodman, and he is off to the races. A flag is down, however, looks like maybe a downfield block. They're gonna hold, they're gonna have a hold on 82. They'll be holding on 82. JJ Bennett, potentially I'm, on I'm the I'm only call. guessing, I'm only guessing, but that's. He was the downfield receiver there, though. What a catch by Makai Bodman right off the bat. That, looked, that looked real dangerous when it was in the air, but. Uh, he found it, and he's brought it in with the one hand. And, so uh, it should be a 10 yards from the spot of the foul, so it won't be a full 10 yards back. It might be. It might bring it back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, if it goes yep, from the yep, spot, it if it goes from the spot, it will bring it back to the original line of scrimmage. Actually, they lose yeah. about a yard, so it's going to be what? Oh, no, they're going to no, take a 10 from the line the of scrimmage. Whoa, that's tough. That is a tough way. And again, this is the stuff that you worry about. First play, the jitters, and now well, we're looking at a first and 20 well, you know what right they off the bat. You know what they probably did call, what I was thinking, was the holding. Oh, that's a 15-yard penalty. That might be a clip. I apologize. He that did is, bring. That he is did a 15 bring. 15-yard penalty. He did bring the guy down with his hands. Yeah, so that is uh, a clipping penalty. So a huge setback after what was a big play. It'll be second and 20, first and 25 for the Whalers, and it's Aguilar on the keeper. Short gain. Again, that RPO run pass option out of the wing T. We'll see that all day. He showed a nice and little burst Already a DUI there. player down on the ground. Uh, the second play from scrimmage. I can't get the number yet. We'll yeah, see you what hate, we got. You hate to see that hat. Of course. But he's he's on his knees and he's moving, so that that's a good sign. But maybe it's his leg. I, yeah. I, he just sort of was there as part of the tackle. Yeah. It was it? Uh, uh, now he's now he's pointing to his stomach. So two that guys might just be a, oblique or something. Yeah. Might just be a little bit of wind knocked out of him. But it's a short gain, if any. I was going to bring up second and long. Yeah, we're looking at about second and 23 now for the Whalers after that huge penalty on their first play from scrimmage. Aguilar with a short gain on the keeper out of that run pass option pistol formation. Again, he's got weapons all over the place. It's just a matter of getting them the ball and getting them in space. Uh, it was very, in very interesting he decided to run on his own, though, in the second play of the game after completing the first pass, which yeah. was called back. Well, again, hopefully we have that, uh, that confidence at quarterback. Single setback now for Aguilar. Double on the right. He's back to pass again, looking deep, overthrown. Once again, Makai Bodden going up for the catch, and it was over everyone's head. 
Double coverage, that was uh, a yeah, dangerous throw. That was uh, thrown in the middle of the field, not the best place to throw, and you have a lot of bodies, a lot of hands, and it's hard to see, and uh, so not, not I the know, best place to hit somebody. I know Coach Saradellis has got a lot of plays in that book. I don't know if he's got a third and 23 in there. This is a tough one. It's a tough you one. Know, do you play it safe here with the wind and just let Justin blast a punt? And, uh, well, maybe like a little, little screen a pass. Little, something so, safe. Something, something safe. safe. You don't want to throw that pass in the middle again and give them excellent field position. Yeah. So Perhaps something quick to JJ or Makai here as well. Lone shotgun Aguilar trips on his left. It's going to be a keeper again, and he is stuffed. No gain. That's real oh, safe there. Yeah. yeah, that's almost too safe. Wish he would have handed it off there. Too, too safe. Maybe get Makai yeah, on, too safe, on the they, edge there. But uh, there's no way they were going to pick up a first down with that play call. So yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to say a quick three and out, but it's a three and out because of the penalty. Yeah, penalty definitely took the wind out of that drive immediately. 10-23 here and counting in the first quarter. No score. We are in the first possession. D.Y. will get the ball in what should, in theory, be pretty good field position unless Justin absolutely I think he can get crushes this, one I think here. he can get this over this kid's head here. This kid, I think, is a little bit too close. Oh, off oh, the side of his kick. foot, however. Bad kick. Takes a D.Y. bounce, and that will end nope. up. Nope. At about the Whaler 35-yard line. Yeah, not when Nantucket wanted there is a bad kick to give them good field position. Another but, thing interesting in this is 12-minute periods this year. Yeah. You really got to uh, feel the effect of that. Uh, in one one moment the state is saying, let's keep these kids healthy, and then another minute you have them playing 12-minute periods. Uh, I, I don't understand this. That's another conversation for a couple, <laughs> couple beverages. We'll get perhaps, mad up here. We'll get I mad know, up right? here yeah, talking about exactly. that. All right, D.Y. also in that shotgun formation single setback. Motion in front of Fitzgerald, and he's going to keep it as well. Avoids one tackler, breaks another one, and he's got a little bit of room off to the left inside the 35 to about the 32. A lot of waggle, but uh, only three yards on the gain here for first down. And they got a flag on their first down play, so there that's going to knock them back at least five. Unless it's a big one. Holden, so that'll, that'll be that'll be a ten yard ten penalty yard from, the from spot. there. So that'll be all the way back to the forty eight yard line now of Nantucket. So both teams shooting themselves in the foot on the first play. Let's see if that gives Nantucket a chance to uh, get the ball back here and stop DY. Three wide receivers out to the right side. Fitzgerald with a lone setback. Hayden Gent in the backfield, and again motion, and flags fly on two straight plays for two, Dennis Yarmouth. Two guys moving, not allowed. Uh, first game jitters. First game jitters indeed. The refs are on it though, they got their jitters out. <laughs> Maybe they were calling that uh, Brockton game last night. Well, now we're all even. First, there you go. first and 25 right? first against and 25. first and 25. <laughs> so the ball all the way back inside the Dennis Yarmouth side of the field at the 47. First and a whole bunch. Once again, single setback for Dennis Yarmouth. Fitzgerald takes the snap and looks to pass. It's out in the flat, caught, and a nice tackle. Open field tackle, otherwise there was some room to run, only a three yard gain. Sean, Sean Murphy yeah. made the tackle. Great and tackle. And we will be there. calling his name quite a bit on defense for sure. Sean Murphy, one of those returning stars from last year's team. So it's second in. We don't have anybody working the uh, the boards, giving yeah, us the down and situation here. But we can figure it out. Second in a whole bunch still. We can <laughs> we can figure it out. I think. Yeah. I'll take Second my shoe off if I have to. We'll call it 27. I'll have to take my right shoe off midfield. to count that high. <laughs> Fake pass and uh, lots of blue bodies in the backfield, and there is a sack. Multiple Murphy. whalers. Tim Murphy. So the other Murphy gets in the act. Tim Murphy, the bottom of that sack. Then he gets some help from uh, Ian Williams. Got to think this is going to be a safe play as well from Dennis Yarmouth. Yeah. Third and about 32. Three 
I think the quarterback uh, will take it himself. He might show pass, but again, you don't want to force a pass on third and long. Again, four wide receivers, two on each side for the formation for Dennis Yarmouth. Quick snap, and it looks like a screen set up. 40, 50, 45, 40, falls down at about the 40-yard line, so they get some of that penalty yardage back, but ultimately enough blue bodies to bring him down short of that first down. Going to be fourth and about 11. He, uh, yeah, about he wasn't going to make it. He tried to make one last cup, but there were too many blue bodies there. And uh, he did go down in the zone, but he wasn't going to make the uh, final 15 so let's yards. See, it looks like they may go for it here, but fourth and about 16. That's a possibility. I mean, against the win, you know, the kicking game is probably the, not going to do You're at the 41. And if they have confidence in their defense, why not? You never know. Trips to the right here for D.Y. He may come back with a very similar play. Fitzgerald rolling to his left or right. On the run, pass oh. is caught. First and 10, big play for Dennis Yarmouth on fourth and 16. They get a first down with a 27 yard completion on the run. Fitzgerald with a great pass there. 23, 23 came across behind everybody. That's and I don't think a Nantucket defender saw him. He got behind everybody, and the quarterback really rifled that ball in there nicely. David Azor on the reception there. 27 yards on fourth and 16. Got to note that one. That's going to that, be an important one right off the bat. And that, now D.Y. is well within striking distance. First and 10 at the 12-yard line. 6.48 to play now in the first quarter. And it's a little handoff inside. Not much room there. Nice play by the D-line for Nantucket. Testing the defensive line, and the Nantucket defensive line stood up strong. He might even knock them back. He might get back to the line of scrimmage. It's going to bring up second and long. They're going to call it no gain, second and 10, as Dick noted. That's one I of those plays that the coaches are just going to have nightmares about. Fourth and 16, and they give up a first down. Well, they, they, can, redeem, they, can, they can redeem themselves if they, they can. can stop it. Trips to the left this time for D.Y. Again, a keeper for Fitzgerald. He's looking to try that left side. He's got a little bit of room, catches the corner, tries to cut back in, and the tackle is made by Jaquan Francis, but a nice gain on second down. That's going to bring it first down on about the goal. five. So they're going to have four chances here Cracking in from about the five, maybe just outside the five. Just outside the five-yard line, but nonetheless, first and goal for D.Y. They come with a little power package, two running backs. That short shotgun formation, Fitzgerald takes it and hands it off. Met immediately by Griffin Fox, filling the hole nicely for the Whalers. That's going to be... Pretty much no gain there. Probably with somebody walking back and forth here. Murphy on the stop for the Wheelers. The ball here for the oh, ball. they call it Murphy on the stop. I, I apologize. I was giving Griffin Fox the, the tackle there. But second and goal from the five. Single back with a little motion to the other side of Fitzgerald. Hopefully Fitzgerald will keep it again. Looks like a butt snap goes over Fitzgerald's head, and he jumps on it, but a huge loss all the way back to the 21-yard line. And that'll bring up, once again, a third and long. Fortunate break for Nantucket, though. That was a big break there for the Will. Now that now they got to sit on the uh, pass play because now they're definitely going to be throwing it. Yeah. I don't know if they get a kick or not, but I think they'll be throwing it on third and fourth down. Yeah, I got a hunch. If they went for it on fourth and 16 from the 40, <laughs> they're going to go <laughs> for it here as well. So four down territory. We're just going to call it that. Uh, but it uh, looked like J.J. Bennett was coming in off of blitz there, and uh, Fitzgerald had no chance. That was well over his head. Once again, four wide outs, motion in front of Fitzgerald, and that's too much motion. Flag down once again. False start. That will push them back, push them back another five yards. So third and goal now from the 25. I can hear the coach up here. He is furious Not at his happy. outfit right now. 
That's four penalties or three penalties already. Yeah. And we have only played seven and a half minutes of game. 4-10 and counting in the first quarter. Quick moving quarter because uh, it's been one possession here for Dennis One, pos one possession for each team. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, oh, a couple of incomplete passes, but so other than third that, and very Clarkson. long for Dennis Yarmouth. Again, motion in front of Fitzgerald. Gets the snap and he is rolling to his right. Lots of blue bodies after him. Got a guy in the end zone. And he's going to try and change his direction and he is going to get caught way behind the line and another flag oh, down. I hope that's not a horse collar. That's a horse collar, I believe. Uh, I don't know if that's an automatic first down it or not. Maybe. That could be an the, automatic first down. The sack was way back at the 46, 47 yard line of DY of Nantucket. That's going to really hurt if it's a horse call. Oh no, it is a block in the back by DY once again. Yeah, Nantucket will refuse that. They'll decline that penalty. Wow, that looked pretty close to a yeah. horse collar there. <laughs> Anytime you're grabbing that back of that neck. Well, the block in the back probably came first, but yeah, uh, yeah. usually they don't call two penalties on the same play, but it does happen once in a while. It does happen occasionally. So fourth down and goal from the 47. I don't know if they got that in their playbook. <laughs> <laughs> the coach is flipping over his cards. Yeah, that's a different side it, of the card ends, for sure. It ends at fourth and tw 12 for, for, for the goal. For the uh, touchdown, doesn't so go past, doesn't, doesn't go to the 47. As we reach the three minute mark here left in the first quarter, a couple of guys jogging off here for DY as they face what Another now will be a punt. Punt into the wind. So Blois and Mackay Bodden, not so deep. And the snap goes to the ground. They will get it off a short kickoff. Blois immediately hit. Big tackle. Mackay Bodden, sorry immediately hit. Big time tackle, but we have another flag in the backfield here. I think Eventually the guys in uh, the stripes got to let them play, right? Got to let them play. <laughs> Shot block on the offense again. Yeah, tuck him. They should make a kick. They can kick it over again. Yeah, they had a problem getting the snap back. Anytime you can get Makai Bodden or Justin Blois open field, it's going to it. knock them back 10, yeah. and they had a bad snap anyways. Yep. Yeah, you'd make them do it make again. Make them kick again. Again, just our humble opinions. <laughs> you, you, you've got a little more experience <laughs> in making decisions like that, but just our <laughs> humble opinion. Who knows? But they're refusing us, see? <laughs> so what do we know? <laughs> no, wait. They're, they're putting it back. They are putting it back. There we go. We got it no, right. they changed it. Huh? Right. They changed it. Changing on the fly. Clock Once is again. stopped, 2.36 to go here in the first quarter. First quarter. First quarter, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> so now the ball is all the way back on the DY side of the field at the 38-yard line. Have you ever seen a drive? St what did it start at it's, the five? It's fourth and goal from the 62-yard line. <laughs> And the punt, once again, a short one. They should let it go. Hopefully get out of the way, get out of the way. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, you don't want that to come down and hit you in the top so of the So they gained helmet. 15 yards on the 10-yard penalty. Wise decision by Coach Perry good, already. Good job there. And, uh, yeah, they, they made him kick it again. They got the snap back, but got the kick this time too high. Once they get up in the, uh, the air there, it got knocked right down. It was an end-over-end -end kick and definitely knocked down by the wind. So the Whalers will take over. Their second possession of the game with just over two minutes, 2.18 to go here in the first quarter. First and 10 Whalers from their own 40 yard line. Let's see if they can avoid penalties. I mean, Dennis Yarmouth absolutely shot themselves in the foot with five penalties, one oh. refused as well. So make it six penalties in their first possession. Single setback, trips to the left, handoff. Nice little hole and it's JB making a cut, making another cut to the outside. He's got room in the 45 40. 35 yard line finally corralled by a couple of runners, defenders. Nice move by Justin. Big game. 27 in. yard run for Blois. That's what we're talking about. Get it to your playmakers. Right. 
First and 10 inside the Dennis Yarmouth side of the field at the 33 yard line. Justin Blois ripping off 27 yards on his first carry of the game. First and 10 Whalers. Baden and Emmanuel to the left. Blois gets it again and it looks like they were not set. Should be motion on the Whalers, unfortunately. And it'll be their second penalty. It'll make it first and 15. So let's not hope the Whalers try to do the same thing yeah. that uh, <laughs> EY did to see how far they can go in the opposite direction. Well, the whistles work for the, <laughs> the referees, that's for sure. They got their whistles working. They've got enough practice already. Clock will continue to run as we approach 135 and counting in the first quarter. A couple of fresh bodies in for the Whalers. As the play comes in, Griffin Fox into the game. It'll be the big boy, J.J. Bennett and Mackay Bodden out to the left side of Aguilar. Blois in the backfield. He will get the handoff once again, tries the left side, cuts outside, and he's got some room. No way one defender is going to bring him down. Pretty good tackle, actually, in the open field, but Blois Rips off another good run. About seven yards there on first and 15. Getting back the penalty and a couple. So bringing up second and eight for the Whalers at the 31 yard line. Good position here now for Nantucket. They got a lot of different things they can try here. They also can keep in the back of their mind with the wind at their back if they uh, want to try another to, throw. To try a throw or, yeah. or even a field goal on fourth down. Although with the clock running, they may go into the wind unless yeah. you use your timeouts here and keep the wind yeah. while you have it. 35 seconds left here and counting. Very quick first quarter. And it's going to be Makai Bodden stuffed in the backfield. Big I'd play. I'd use a timeout here to keep the win. Big play. The loss will be about nine yards well, on second down, bringing off. If you want to throw it, if you want to throw, you're going to have to call a timeout because you're not going to get this play in. We're going to end the quarter with the discussion on the sideline yeah. with no timeout. And it looks like they're just going to let it run as no timeout is being signaled. And we have reached the end of the first quarter. No score. The Whalers have their second possession, but uh, face a long third down here. And only one possession for Dennis Yarmus. So a very quick first quarter. Once again, many thanks to Dune Restaurant and Bar for sponsoring our first quarter of play. And uh, we'll have to go by the uh, Dune Restaurant and Bar and celebrate all the Whalers' victory. That's so true. They, 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 it's know. a beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful bar there. <laughs> All right, so 0-0 zero, zero as both teams have made major mistakes penalty-wise and play-calling-wise. Uh, you might say it's a typical opening day yeah. in, at, at this level, you know, at, at this level, especially when, I don't want to say last year was washed out, but it, basically it was. You know, you, you try to play some football in, I don't know how many games D.Y. played in the spring, but you know, Nantucket what, played, played five games, was it? Two and They did two have and, five, two and two, and two were three, canceled. Two and three record, and, uh, and right now they have a seven-game schedule set before the playoffs, but we talked about this off Montemoy, the air, was yeah. that Montemoy is not going to play uh, the big teams in the league, so that means uh, Nantucket and Sandwich and I believe D.Y. is the other one will be looking for another opponent and that could affect you because uh, what I was hearing about the new tournament playoff system was yeah. you had to play seven games to qualify and right now Nantucket only has a six game six schedule. Six games left on the schedule, including a huge one against Mashby next week. You got Mashby, Nossick got beat up badly. That yeah. they're on the ring, but uh, Vineyard also lost yesterday. Sandwich uh, will be a big one. Mark that one. That's down the road. They lost, but they lost to a tough Fairhaven team, 14 to eight. So third and long, third and 13 for the Whalers. It'll be a handoff inside, breaking a tackle. Still on his feet, scrambling inside the 30. Was Justin Blois once again? Yeah, he made a, uh, a nice maneuver there to get away from that tackle. Another eight yard gain, bringing up a fourth down from the 30 yard line, which I got a hunch 
They're going to go for here, fourth and about seven, six. six yeah, you're not, you're not, you're certainly are not going to punt it. You're not going to try a field goal into the wind. Well, not with the weapons that they have. I mean, honestly, let's, let's you, get the you, ball to one of our big weapons here. If you're and, in the uh, fourth quarter and it's still zero zero, right. that may change your thinking. But right, right now, you want to get a first down. You need seven yards, and there's a lot of seven yard plays in your playbook. Snap was supposed to go. To Blois, it's up for grabs. Oh, and Makai Bodden made a play for it, unable to grab it in the end zone. Good throw by Aguilar. Bodden unable to adjust his body and make the spectacular catch, and that will turn the ball over to Dennis Yarmouth. The new, the new terminology for that is back shoulder pass. Right? Back shoulder pass. When I was a kid, it was a lousy pass. <laughs> now all of a sudden, it's a back shoulder pass. You know. <laughs> Just change the terminology and make it sound good. Right? <laughs> it's a positive twist, I suppose. A positive, a positive twist. twist. So right. DY will take over for its second possession at the 30 yard line. Their own 30. Once again, four wide outs for Fitzgerald, single setback. And he will get the snap looking to throw. Down! The big guy, J.J. Bennett, with the denial at the line of scrimmage. I think they say that if you can't get to the QB, get your hands up, baby. Get your hands up. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's got good arm span there. He comes in at 6'6", 220. But I can't mean, teach he, height. He's got, he's got the long arm. He does too, have so a wingspan on him. It, that makes it we'll big. We'll have to see him on the basketball court as well. So second and 10 for D.Y. as that pass is knocked down. Uh, some switching on the defensive side of the ball for the Whalers. As once again, four wideouts for Dennis Yarmouth. And Fitzgerald back to pass again. Throws it out underneath. He's got some room. First down catch from David Azor. Once again, he came up with the big play for D.Y. in their first possession. That was a nice little play call there as they had a lot of the uh, wide people down the field. He came underneath, caught it wide open, and then had a little, bit of, underneath, yep. a little bit of running room. So first and 10 for D.Y., give it about a 12, 13-yard gain. Actually, 16 yards on that game. I stand corrected. 46-yard line. First and 10, D.Y., 10.34 to go. Waiting on the handoff. Once again, Azor trying to get the edge. Flag down. And Nantucket with a good open field tackle. Jaquan Francis on the edge. Looks like they're going to get 30, 30 on D.Y. for the block. I think he went down too low. Yet another penalty on yeah. the Dolphins. And our second quarter of action is sponsored by our good friends at Vineyard Vines, who believe every day should feel this good. That's an excellent mantra. And I got to say that uh, one of their managers, Elizabeth, is my across the street neighbor. Oh. So we're happy to have Vineyard Vines as one of our sponsors Thank here. Thank you, today. Elizabeth. And uh, we can put up with. If you gotta say the vineyard, right. you've gotta add vines to it. I know. Any That's other the only time way. you any other time you say the vineyard and vines is not there, you're in trouble. We got we'll, problems. We'll go with vineyard vines though. Technicality. She so, she she should be the major sponsor for the Allen Cup game. Seriously. We should uh, once again flags down before the snap. That was a first and twenty play as it was holding against DY. With nine fifty to go here in the first half. No score in what we thought would be a very competitive game, but uh, kind of an ugly first half here thus far. I have unofficially DY for seven. Uh, seven penalties already. For Fifty yards yeah, unofficial. Oh my lord! Anything I say is unofficial, so I don't, <laughs> I don't have to. I don't have to remind people about that. But right now, seven penalties. That's a lot wow. of penalties for. Uh, and they did. We only played a, a, a one uh, one quarter in just three over minutes. Quarter, yeah. yeah. And one penalty declined. One declined on top of that, yeah. right. So the eight, eight calls, seven accepted. So once again, D.Y. facing a big hole all the way back to the 30-yard line. And Fitzgerald passing. It's caught immediately hammered. Again, By Justin, Justin Boyce. Justin was covering the wideout, 15 coming Boyce down. But he peeled off when he saw the pass underneath this time, and he held it to a minimum gain, only about a three or four yard gain. 
Nice open field tackle by the do-it-all guy, Justin Boyd. Justin tell is you. doing it all. He does it all. Got the only real positive yardage thus far for Nantucket on offense. Does the kickoff duties, punt duties. Fitzgerald with motion in front, going to be a counter play, and Nantucket snuffs it out. Xavier yeah, Stanley on the behind the backfield in the backfield there for Nantucket with the loss, bringing up another big third down. Interesting, the uh, DY uh, field hockey teams were here today. They started those games at 11 o'clock. The games are over, so DY is picking up a lot of fans here as all the girls from the uh, field hockey game are coming along the side of the fence here to cheer there on There you here. go, and I did see that the Nantucket volleyball team won already today, so congrats, congrats to, to the Coach volleyball. Vaselli. Coming off of a conference championship last year in the tournament. Right, they made the tournament, yeah, that's, that's great. Third for long, team. it's gonna be Fitzgerald bringing it down and he's looking to run and he has got nothing going on. That should bring up a punt for DY as uh, it is fourth and about 14 from their own 41 yard line. They'll have the win. With the win. They'll have the win this time. So uh, I think Justin ought to get back around the 15 yard line. He's and it is. Not far enough back yet, but we'll see. And it is Blois back to field along with Makai Baden. Oh, they got a guy on the edge there uncovered. There you go. Jaquan France is getting out there. The kick is off, and it is another short kick. End over end. Should get a good bounce, though, inside the 30 of the 25. Call it the 23-yard line. Yeah, D.Y. Kick very, away from those guys. Yeah, D.Y. was very uh, happy with that bounce there. Not a, not a great kick, but uh, they kept it away from Justin, and they got a great roll. Good result. 7.03 to play in the first half here. No score from Vito Capizzo Stadium. Once again, Chris do, Morris do you know, do you know those people? Dick Herman. We have some familiar faces down here on the sideline, absolutely. <laughs> Is that your family? Congratulations, what a beautiful little uh, boy you have there. Take We've got the young, one of the younger Whalers fans the, uh, here down joining us below, good thing, my, good thing my he daughter has, Theodora. Good thing, good thing he has, uh, she has your mother's look. They uh, make me yeah. look good, don't they? <laughs> they make me look good. All right. So first come. and 10, looks like DY is going to call timeout. First and talk time, things over. First time out of the day. Now, last out, year, Dolphin. in the spring, they were supposed to have officials call oh. a timeout at certain times of the game, which, to my mind, never happened. Yeah, it? the under six minute water break is what they <laughs> called it. And uh, sometimes it happened, sometimes it didn't. I think there was a, a judgment call that they called. Uh, if if the, a team was driving, they weren't going to stop the momentum of that or whatever. So, uh, but uh, so you I'm know, if they were all just as smart as you and I, <laughs> you know, this game would be a pretty simple game. The world, <laughs> the world would be a better the world place, would be a better place if they listen well. to us. Well, they're Good. listening to us now. They're, they're hearing us anyway. <laughs> they're they're, they're us. listening. <laughs> Always a fun time here in the booth with Dick Herman. Bringing you live coverage of Whaler football here today. I love all the puppy, the puppy dogs down here too, enjoying the game. As always, on an Nantucket production, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm surprised they don't let them on the field. Let them on the field. <laughs> Get the ball, boy. So once again, first and 10 for the Whalers. It'll be their third possession of the first half. Justin Boyce has been the lone bright spot, ripping off a 27 yarder, a little seven yard gain, an eight yard gain. So that's quick math for 42 yards here in the first half. 42 by three is 14 a carry. Yeah, yeah so if you we'll can get that. 14 a carry, keep giving it to them. Yep. It'll be a lot of no one in down. the backfield here. Motion in front and another flag. This one should be on the Whalers. When they stop the play before well, it starts, it's usually on the offense. <sighs> Not what uh, Coach Saradellis or Coach Perry had drawn up oh, after no, a timeout. Isn't. It isn't, wow. Oh, must have been. They had to be lined up offside. Lined then. up offsides. Well, a break there for the Whalers. First and five now from the 28 yard line. Still 7.03 to play here in the first half. That's what their ninth penalty now for DY? Yeah. They have more penalties than they do actual plays. Nine penalties, eight accepted by the Whalers. Unbelievable. And yet it is still 0 0. 0 0. <laughs> 
So the Whalers well, unable to capitalize. The best drive of the far. day was, uh, I think, negative 42. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be some interesting stuff. the five across midfield. So Blois, oh, just gobbled up in the backfield. Oh, and it should be, could be a taunting penalty right there. You can't talk about that sort of stuff there in high school, sir. Not at any level. No, not, not at any, any level, level, but that was some taunting. We could see that clearly from here. That'll be an automatic first down for the Whalers. So Justin... Uh, now what should have been a positive play for D.Y. has now turned into a big play for now the Whalers. Th that counts on Justin's stats though, right? Uh, that negative run, yeah. It should count. Yeah. Because that's so he, after so the play. So he had like a negative, he had like a negative five on that. Yeah. So that hurts his stats a bit, but he'll take the, uh, the big penalty, which gives Wills a first down. Ball moved all the way to the 38-yard line of Nantucket for first down. Six forty-nine to go and running here, and uh, as you mentioned, zero-zero. Uh, I think Nantucket will take that, but they'd really like to uh, get on the scoreboard before halftime here. There has not been a whole lot of open space in the middle. Let's see if we can get something to the outside here. Get Blois or Baden some room to run. No one in the backfield, and oh boy, a shovel pass caught amazingly. Uh-oh, that is a hit to the leg. Uh, Hopefully he is okay. That looked awkward. Bad, Tackle bad decision. Yeah. Bad decision there. That's that youth, that the, inexperience. It, uh, it went for completion. It could have easily went for six the other way. Uh, but as you say, Justin took a big time hit on the end of that. He and, is okay. Uh, that is a tough kid. He, uh, he got up, thank goodness. He wound up losing two. But it could, could have been a lot more disastrous. Yeah. So again, right there, you probably, if you're a teaching moment there, you throw it away. Throw the ball away. Take your second down. Now it's second and 12. With the loss of two on first down. Single setback in that pistol. And it's going to be Blois. Oh, my oh. goodness. Blown up again. Another big hit. And he is down. Wow. Back-to-back -back big hits. And Justin is a little bit slow getting up this yeah. time. That was Jake Arsenal coming in from his think, linebacker oh, position. I Somebody think, missed I think, a, I think he got to take him out. Missed, a, missed an assignment there on the offensive line. Another two-yard loss. This is not an official timeout, so the officials are saying only one play can go over and talk to the DY coach. Uh, Nantucket's got to take Justin out for Yeah, he is slowly walking off. And uh, they, that he is okay, but he's walking off, so. He's walking off, that's good, yeah. That is a good sign, but man, he got walloped two plays in a row. He is a tough kid, but. <laughs> <laughs> Tougher than me. Tougher than you and I'd I combined. Still, I'd still be laying down here on the ground. If he would come over to me and say something, I'd say, I'm going to stay here until everybody leaves, then I'll, <laughs> then I'll get up. When everybody goes home, I'll get up. But I can stop getting hit. <laughs> so once again, third and long. Another negative carry for Justin. So after having a couple of three straight positives, uh, I think we jinxed him by giving that's his average. That's, that's true. It's on us, Justin. Sorry. Yeah. Motion in front. Aguilar. Looking to throw it deep. That is a lazy pass and will go out of bounds. Not a great throw there. And he, he took, took, a, he took a big hit. And he slow took to get up as well. How is that not a late hit? Oh, no. Uh, I'm looking at it, and it's quite borderline, but I think the official got it right. He had, it, he had the shoulder going into his uh, chest just as the arm was uh, releasing the ball. It was very close. This is not good for the new quarterback of the Whalers. So we'll have to see what happened here. Uh, we'll see if uh, Almonte, so Al Almonte comes in at quarterback or whether Makai immediately goes right back to his position that he played all of last year. Yeah. Almonte's a senior, but uh, I don't, I don't know. Have to I take don't him have out for I don't, at least one play. I don't know him having any experience. He so. is up and holding his back, so maybe it's just a kind of a stinger situation. 
We'll keep an eye on seeing if number 11 is coming in. And I think I see number 11 coming in. So he is the backup right now. So, tough break for the okay, Whalers it's fourth, there. Oh, it's fourth down anyways. All right, so we don't yeah. need a quarterback for this play, which is good and bad. It's good that you don't have to test out a kid. It's bad that we have to give the ball up, kicking into the wind, and the D.Y. will have the ball at about four and a half minutes, providing they don't muff it. Late arrival for the Whalers. The snapper. The snapper, right. How, how else are you going to start that play? So Justin Boyce back to punt, Mr. Do-It-All. And he gets off a good kick considering. Fielded at about the 40, some room to run, 45, 50. 45 and a push out of bounds at about the 43 yard line. So a good kick, good return though. As DY will have great field position with just over four minutes to play here in the second quarter. Once decent, again, a decent punt, but not a lot of hang time. So DY did get a good run back. Once again, many thanks to Vineyard Vines. who believe every day should feel this good. We'll feel better if uh, the Whalers can hold here and take a 0-0 score into halftime. Yeah, that's their goal right now, unless you can uh, get lucky and get a uh, turnover. No turnovers yet, right? No turnovers yet. No. Just the turnover on downs, but uh, a couple of dangerous throws. Danger, a lot of danger, a uh, no, couple of muffs, but no turnovers. Turnovers does it yet. Fitzgerald back to pass once again. He's got time and has a man open over, over the middle with plenty of room to run all the way inside the Whalers 20 yard line. You're going to say the 12. It looks like a face could mask. Be a face mask in addition. Could be a face mask. As Makai Bodden on the tackle. Let's see if he got a little bit of the helmet as well. Huge play as Fitzgerald completes the pass. The so face mask will bring it down to the six. About a 30 yard gain on the pass play. Simple crossing pattern. So this is going to be uh, first and goal from about the six. That was Alex Sheffield White, a junior, catching and rumbling down the field. And D.Y. is quick to the ball, ready to get the snap off here. And some personnel. It's at the seven, out. so it's first in goal from the seven. So they're going to have four crack, cracks at it from the seven. So I think it's the 11-yard line, 12-yard line. 12-yard line, all right. And it's going to be Fitzgerald on the keeper. He is gobbled up right at the line of scrimmage, so good job by the Nantucket Whalers there. J.J. Bennett just coming into the game. He was in on the tackle. If 340 and counting. Second and 10, no gain on the play for yeah. Dennis Yarmouth. The clock is not a, a factor here because they have plenty of timeouts in their pocket. Right, right now, right they now. They have two left. Yeah, they did call that one on defense. but Right now they got to... Uh, and with the wind, obviously the kicking game could come into play here, but we'll see. They could get a first down then on about the two. Yeah. Then the time could come into a factor. Single setback, four wideouts for Dennis Yarmouth in a pro set. Fitzgerald fumbles and will be gobbled up behind the line of scrimmage. They call it dead at about the 17 yard line. So a sack for the Whalers. Quick whistle That's there. That's their second sack. Yeah, he was kind of. Quick whistle there. Uh, Nantucket will tackles, take it. But <laughs> yeah. Nantucket will take it. He was, he was breaking out of the tackle as the whistle was blowing. If I was the DY coach, I'd be doing a little bit of hollering right Six now. Six yard loss on the sack, bringing up third and long. Once again, that has been a theme on both sides of the offensive side of things. Uh, neither team has I'm, really I'm waiting, put together a drive. I'm waiting for third and one. Third and one would be we're, great. We're looking for a third somewhere. and one. We haven't seen that yet today. <laughs> Let's see if the Whalers can avoid a, a, a silly penalty here and uh, make D.Y. really have a decision with fourth down. And some communication. Fitzgerald back to pass. Quick throw and a nice oh, oh. breaking of a tackle, but once again gobbled up. That was uh, Sean Murphy with the initial hit. And it'll bring up fourth down 
and about 10, so only a six yard gain there on third down. I don't see a tee going in, so no field goal in their playbook. So fourth and call it 10 as they got back to the original line of scrimmage. No, there is a there is a tee there. They're there is a tee. All right, there you go. He, Let's see he, what happens he must here. Have, he must have carried it in under his shirt. Theodore Lavoy with the left-handed boot coming up here on fourth down. The kick is up. No good. We got a whistle, though. Got a whistle before the flag. No good. Let's see what the whistle is. And maybe the Whalers call timeout. Got me confused. No, they're going to let it go. I think the Whalers are going to take Somebody over here. Whistle. I heard a whistle. <laughs> The kick was no good, however, so the Whalers will take over on downs. First and ten. And they gain a few yards because the ball is placed where the kick was, so now at the 20-yard line. That's pretty close to their best play of the day, right? Yeah. <laughs> That one long. Nothing negative. So nothing negative. Anything positive. And it is Almonte out. in at quarterback. So Aguilar is hurt. Is Justin back in? Uh, no voice either. Uh, is that, Wait, that could be end? him on the. Yeah, he Justin's back in. All right. Get him the ball. And Almonte keeps it. A little bit of room to the edge. Eventually gobbled up, but a short game. 120 and counting. And again, I think with the backup quarterback, probably going to be some safe play calls here for Tim Saradellis. Yeah, you don't want you don't want a, a turnover here. And the that's, Whalers. That'd be the worst possible thing. If you DY, you, you might use your timeout, especially if you can uh, hold them to a third and long here. We'll see how they play it out. So 40 seconds and counting here, second and about nine. And it's going to be Boyce trying to catch the edge. Another flag down. He does catch the edge and gets about 10 on the play. But looks like they're going to bring this one back. Clock stop with 33 seconds left in the first half. Now if you DY, use your timeouts. One, of the, one, one thing that uh, coaches have a hard time adjusting to, especially at this level, is you know game situations, game management. Yeah. Right now, the game management is make Nantucket punch Kick this it. ball. Yep. Make it into the wind, and now backed up deep into their own end, all the way back to the 10-yard line. It'll be second and about 18, 19 yards. Uh, again, I got a hunch, a safe running play here. And, uh, a safe we'll running if, play. See if D.Y. calls would, those timeouts. If D.Y. doesn't call the timeout, it's the last play of the half. But yeah. D.Y. uses their two timeouts here. They could force the, uh, the punt. Nobody in the backfield. Blois motion in front. And it'll be Almonte keeping it. Just get down, son. <laughs> Another loss on the play. Hold on to the ball. D.Y. Time does, out, does as you do the timeout. 26 seconds, and the Whalers will face a third down. And uh, unless they well, you run it out, they'll at least have to punt. Because uh, D.Y. only has one timeout left. So you only get three and a half? Correct. I thought it was more than that. But what do I know? So one more timeout left. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. Yeah. But uh, no, it'll work. It's third. Yeah, it'll work. They'll get the ball back if, unless Nantucket uh, has a big play has here. a 20-yard uh, play. But you don't want to throw it here. So you got to. Uh, Especially not with a backup quarterback. You got to save. Hand it you got to have here, a safe play, and with a safe play, you got to break a tackle or two. But they have big playability. We have not called J.J. Bennett yet. And we haven't called Caden Shea yet, Justin Zadroga. Um, it's been a lot of Justin Blois and a lot of keepers. But it's been hard for either offense to get any momentum and, and, and go here. Penalties have just gobbled up hurt, most hurt. of the drives here, hence the 0-0 score. 
Almonte will have Bennett and Mackay Bodden to his right. They're in a throwing Boyce formation. In the backfield. Some motion in back, and he is going to throw from his own end zone. That's dangerous intercepted yeah. at the 20 yard line. Major, major and mistake on the. down to the 10. Good catch. Yeah. That's a major mistake. Not a good throw. And it start, starts with the play call. Tough play call there, and uh, that one will be noted. So, first turnover. DY. Just 16 seconds. They do have one timeout. They have the ball at the Whalers 12 yard line for their second threat of the game. You gotta, Fitzgerald can wing it though. You got to expect them to be throwing it yep. here because if you get the uh, incompletion, you get the, the Time clock will stop. Four wide outs for Fitzgerald as he is in the shotgun. Oh, fumbles the snap, gets it back, launches it into the end zone, way overthrown. And clock will, should stop with 10 seconds. Well, Nantucket got a break there unless the official resets the clock. It was definitely a second or so that ran off. Home clock <laughs> advantage there. <laughs> so we talked about turnovers. There's one. Let's see if the Whalers can uh, get fortunate here. Maybe a DY will run out of time. Second and 10. The assistant coach is uh, yelling about the clock. Yeah, yeah. We'll see if they do anything about it. So just 10 Maybe. seconds to go. The incomplete pass brings up second and 10 for Dennis Yarmouth. Whalers trying to keep him out of the end zone here. Three wide receivers to Fitzgerald's left. One running back, again another high snap. Throw over the middle again, overthrown. Good coverage by Makai Bodden. Looking for their playmaker. Once again, David Azor who has been the lone bright spot for Dennis Yarmouth. Can't Offensively, think. five seconds. Got to think this is the last play here of the first half. Yeah, you got to throw something quick. Got to throw it quick if you're going to get the fourth down in. They do have a timeout, but this isn't the pros, man. This no. five seconds is is pretty darn quick. I think Tom Brady ran three plays in five seconds. <laughs> if, if my memory, I don't know if I if, see number 12 behind there. It's if my just memory, two. <laughs> if my memory is right. All right, here Eli, it is. Here Probably the last play of the first half. We'll see. Fitzgerald back to pass. Getting some pressure, and he will go down. Nantucket holds. And that is the end of the first he, half. They call timeout. They call timeout. They're going to put a second or two back no on. Way. Yeah. They call timeout. I don't know how that got less than five the, seconds in a sack. The official, the uh, the assistant coach was out there signaling timeout before the, uh, just as the sack was happening. I, I think they'll put back about two seconds. That's the half. No, no, that's the half. They're not going to put it back. Yeah. D.Y. Were... not happy about that, but I got to say, there's no way a play didn't last five seconds, especially with a sack. The clock's running anyways. There's, you know. Anyway, here we are at halftime. With no score from Vito Capizzo Stadium, and I think we can qualify that as a pretty ugly first half. It was, offensively. Uh, yeah, yeah. Both, both teams having in trouble. And, and I'm looking over my shoulder here. They're still talking about whether the half's over or not. I assume it is. The official said so. But the DY is not happy with the clock. Uh, management right now. But, uh, you know, the key stat on, on both sides of the, is the uh, the penalties. Both teams have uh, taken too many penalties. DY is twice as much as Nantucket, but... Uh, but and yeah. they've all been key penalties. 15 yarders for blocks on the back, holding penalties. I mean, those are just drive killers and uh, just no recovery. Again, again, it is uh, just one of those things and in high school. You just can't overcome it. Opening day. Opening day jitters on both teams. And, uh, but Nantucket's in a good spot here. You're home. It's 0-0 uh, zero, zero at halftime. You're playing up a bigger team. So uh, you, can, you can steal this game. Could have been worse. Could have been worse. Well, we have reached halftime here at Vito Capizzo Stadium. Happy to have you here on NCTV 18. And we have a 
very special lineup for you for halftime here. It's NCTV 18's newest program, Nantucket Life. It's a half hour magazine style series that celebrates the uniqueness of Nantucket, its people, uh, and its people through a broad view of the island's environment, history, and culture. Every episode featuring a variety of short segments that highlight a different aspect of life on the island. And today we have the opportunity to share one of these with you. It's from the first episode. And uh, Dick, have you ever wanted to take a sail on a tall ship? I look out at that. I wish I was on it. I know, right? <laughs> it's a beautiful boat. Well, we're going to join Captain Donald Peacock and his crew as they educate the local Nantucket youth from the Egan Maritime Institute. Pull, 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 pull. Yeah, you get in front, dude. There you go. Pull, 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 pull. Pull as hard as you can. Come on. Guys, we are on the peak halyard. It's called the peak halyard because it's gonna haul up the very most forward point of the sail called the peak. Okay guys, so watch me. Alright guys, I'm gonna say we're gonna do some big ones here. I'm gonna say heave and you guys are gonna say ho. We're all gonna pull together, alright? Heave! Oh. Nice. Heave! Oh. Alright, that's well make that. All right, guys, you're good. Drop that line. Nice job, guys. Just the way they did it 200 years ago, sailing out of Nantucket Harbor, under sail. Got a boatload of Nantucket kids on board, which is really what the whole mission is all about with the Egan Maritime. That's those well, sir. That's well, Jib. Or that's what. That's well, Stasel. That's well, Stasel. <laughs> that's well. What we call this sail? No. Not the main sail. Because we're a schooner, we have two masts. Our main mast is our taller mast, is the after mast. And our forward mast is our fore mast. Off of the main mast is flown our main sail. Off of the fore mast is flown our fore sail. Uh, this is uh, technology and a design from over 200 years ago. And um, taking those things into consideration. We use our sails a lot to steer the ship, although Lynx has an engine. Uh, we have a combination of engine and sails when we need it, but we're under uh, complete sail power coming out. Two, six, two, six, two, six. Ever heard of it? No. Where you been? <laughs> so, did you guys see that uh, boat that was anchored before we got off the dock that kind of looked a little bit like us? Yeah. Yeah. So they're called the Alabama and they're from Martha's Vineyard. So when they come out, we are going to salute them with a cannon, or two cannons. So we actually call them carronades. I'm referring to them as cannons, so you guys know what I'm talking about. But the first thing we need to do is we need to create the explosion. So this is six pounds of black powder, and we're going to be using this, which is called a ramming rod, to ram the black powder all the way in the back of the gun. This doesn't make the explosion, it just loads it. We will be shooting bread. So this is called a wadding. What this does is it keeps the black powder back there so you're not just creating the explosion within the gun, you're keeping something back. So we are kind of creating pressure in the barrel so that you're not just igniting it and the explosion is happening. Iano, Iano Lynx. And then we take the second ramming rod and make sure it's all the way back there. 
Captain Cab, we were trying to get a hold of you. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, you mind if I stay on the greens and I'll see you on the reds? Perfectly fine. We'll come down your port side. Have a great day. Hi, Arnold. This is Lynx Clear. Thank you. Have a nice day. So now it's just basically concentration of using your maritime situational awareness. You got a big boat coming by. He's got passengers. We've got passengers. We're just making sure in the narrow channel that we've got passing arrangements. He understands where I'm going and I understand where he's going. And once he's past the no wake zone, he'll power up and be an impressive sight going by. Yeah, you get in front. There you go. Pull, 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 pull. Pull as hard as you can. Come on. Go hard, big. Come on. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Okay, so this is a, another fun experience for us because we've got Alabama coming out of the harbor now under full press. Right now, we're calling the boats when we're sailing like this, full and by. We are right now full and by. Fire is able. All right, guys, cover your ears, cover your ears. Fire! What's about uh, the square sails in the ship that make the ship move very Well, fast? The, the square is a very powerful sail, both upwind and downwind. People don't look at the square as an upwind sail. But it is and our lower sails our four lowers are, are pulling sails they're pulling us to windward with lift and the square sail is also jumping in on that right. and it's driving the boat pretty cool huh yeah want to take I'm the so wheel to have this i'm gonna be right here with you all right grab a spoke okay and you're just gonna we don't do a lot of turning we just do a little bit of correcting excellent who's this at the wheel joseph now we've got a, Good job, man. Pretty good feeling behind yeah. the wheel of a 122 foot schooner, huh? <laughs> Doesn't he know who I am? We'd like to welcome you back to <laughs> NCTV 18's production of <laughs> Whalers Football. Hanging out with the incomparable one, Dick Herman. <laughs> Uh, that was a wonderful episode of, about the Lynx. If you'd like to see the full episode of Nantucket Life, it is now available to watch on both YouTube and Nantucket Channel 18. And of course, if you are interested in sponsoring Nantucket Life, please email NCTV's Executive Director, Lisa Getter, our fearless leader, our fearless leader or Lisa. visit nctv18.org for more information. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, of course, you can find that information right in the description. Well, we've got a few minutes before kickoff here. DY's back on the field, and uh, Dick, we had a bunch of penalties. Just an ugly first half, to be honest. Yeah, first game jitters yeah. all around. Uh, the officials are calling them tight, <laughs> you know. Put the whistle away, let them play. But you you got to call the obvious one. Yeah, yeah. That's what they're doing. Uh, the only bright spot, really, for the Whalers has been Justin Blois, not surprisingly. Uh, he ripped off a couple of good uh, runs and uh, then got blasted a couple plays in a row they had to take him out for a couple of, couple of plays but uh, overall he's got about 36 yards uh, of uh, offense on the ground he has one catch for uh, negative two yards so not much offense again for either team Fitzgerald looks very confident for DY behind center uh, threw a couple of nice balls uh, to uh, David Azor uh, but uh, again penalties have just eaten away at any consistent drives and uh, the lone field goal attempt by Dennis Yarmouth there at the end was wide to the right and uh, no good so we are at 0-0 zero, zero through well what was 24 minutes of play. Well Nantucket's very uh, fortunate to be 0-0 zero, zero. Yeah. they made two major mistakes let's forget about the penalties those two passes a yeah. the one the shuffle pass or the push pass whatever you want to call it when Justin got really banged that yeah. was that was real dangerous and then the last pass that was intercepted. Yeah. And uh, that kid almost brought it into the end zone. Yeah. And uh, he didn't, and Nantucket stopped him. So dangerous plays, but they dodged the bullet, and it's still 0-0, zero, zero, and that's what counts. And that second pass, as you noted, was from uh, Lionel uh, Almonte, the backup quarterback. So we'll have to see if uh, Nantucket even has Aguilar available for the second half. Uh, he walked off on his own power, but was kind of holding his back. So we'll have to see backs are funky uh, if you get a get a little tweak there. 
Uh, looked like a guy landed on him uh, just as he was throwing to, so that outstretched form, you know, uh, form that he had. Uh, so hopefully he's available. Well, Dr. Lepi's on the sideline, so he's certainly part of that decision. The good thing is the ambulance hasn't moved yet, so nobody's going to that's the hospital. True, that's true. So that's Nothing another, serious. That's another, that's another good sign there. So he is on the sidelines, and we'll see, uh, we'll see what type of injury it is. Uh, if it's uh, on the serious side, we won't see him the second yeah. half. Uh, that will sure, certainly shorten the offensive playbook for Nantucket. Uh, but Coach Cerradella said that, uh, you know, if, if, if uh, Aguilar went down, he wouldn't really try and do a whole lot of different things. Again, I think, in, again, just our humble opinion because we're, we're able to give it. Uh, get it to your playmakers. Get it to that's, Blois. That's get it to Mackay. Uh, get them some space. We haven't even called J.J. Bennett, and he's taller than you and I put together. <laughs> Uh, but it, so. the good thing, the good thing is, your backup quarterback is a senior. Yeah, that's that's valuable. It'd be different the other way around yeah. if the senior gets hurt and your backup guy comes in as a sophomore. So the sophomore beat out the uh, the senior, but now the senior's getting his chance. So yeah. he's he certainly got some experience. Might not be game experience, but it's certainly practice experience. Yeah, we called him a couple of times. Again, in a couple of the blowouts, he was able to get some snaps in. But again, you know, that, that end of the game scenario is not quite the pressure that he faces right, right now, now with a 0-0 game in the second half uh, for the first game of the season. Uh, so we will be ready for kickoff here just a couple of minutes. Um, the we're big... Gonna, the big, the big thing is in a 0-0 game is the halftime adjustment. Yep. So the, the pressure is on both coaching staffs to make an adjustment. It could just be a small adjustment, something on defense, something on a, a block, something on a play call. But whatever coach can come up with a unique change, that could help them uh, get a touchdown. If, if I was DY's coach, I would say don't hold. <laughs> <laughs> If they cut down the penalties, obviously uh, this would be a different game. But uh, the shooting I, themselves in the foot has I, been. Uh, I would I would keep calling that quarterback's number. Yeah. He uh, he he's uh, he's dangerous. He can run and throw. And uh, yeah, Fitzgerald has looked solid in the in the backfield for for Dennis Yarmouth. And again, they've uh, they've got something in that Azor kid. We'll have to see if Nantucket can keep him corralled. The wind has uh, sustained, but, uh, you know, really didn't play a whole lot of a factor. You know, it's held up a couple of punts, but the kicking game is always an adventure in is high school it, is this the uh, Is this the end of that Hurricane Larry that, <laughs> that we were hearing about? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> maybe. We've had a couple of them roll through, but well, I, uh, fortunately I, we're playing under sunny skies here today at Vito Capizza Stadium. I, I have one sibling and his name is Larry. Oh, there you go. So, so I, I, get a, I, get a, I get a joke, I got a joke with Hurricane Larry, yeah. <laughs> a hurricane that's out in the middle of the ocean but not affecting anybody. I, right. I don't understand that. The surfers enjoy it. The though. surfers enjoy it. Yeah. You surf in your days? I, I, a lot of body surf. Body surfing, yeah. yeah. I was good at that too. We got big, we got long <laughs> bodies to get, give those waves something to throw around. One, one thing I could always do and the water was float. Right. And I, I'd, I'd float around and I envisioned that if I were ever in a boating accident, you know, coming over from Hyannis sure. and the water goes down, yeah, yeah. I, I would say to myself, I think I could float for about an hour. For about an they hour. They should find me. Right. They should find me. So I no have, problem. I have no, yeah. no problem. I, I won't drown. I'll, 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 <laughs> well, I'll be fortunately, floating. we didn't have to worry about I that. Didn't, I, I didn't have to put it to work. No. There you go. <laughs> but that's a good plan. That's a good plan. <laughs> Well, once again, thank you for joining us here on NCTV 18's presentation of Whalers Football. Uh, if you would like to be a sponsor of the football program, of course, you could also email Lisa at nctv.org. She is our fearless leader, our executive director, and would be but, happy to... But if you see either me or you walking down the street, Absolutely. just stop us. Just sure. run up and say, Dick, I want to be a sponsor. Chris, I want to be a sponsor. We'll hook you right up. The support for the Whalers is always appreciated, and uh, we will absolutely... I think that's rule number one. Always take the money. Always take the money. <laughs> we won't run with it either. That's right. Well, and it's, it, it, you know, there are advantages to, uh, you know, the NCTV thing. It's, it is a nonprofit, so you get a little of a, you know, tax credit. So that's always nice. You need that. I need that. Everybody and needs it's that. It's good for the, uh, good exposure for the kids here, too. And most importantly, it is great exposure for the kids. It uh, gets them on. And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, if you are streaming this on YouTube, 
that can be replayed whenever you'd like. Uh, you just jump on the NCTV website or the YouTube channel and uh, you can stream that at your convenience, at your leisure. You, that's how you watch the game, right? I, at my leisure, right. <laughs> <laughs> I try to keep upright, though, because if I, I lay down a bit, I'll, I'll miss most of it. There you go. All right, We're going to get back into the window here because the Whalers are set to kick off from our right to left. That is into the wind. So Nantucket's so going to have the win in the fourth quarter. Let's see how that plays out. And uh, I would think they would D want that. DY is going to. Uh, if they're going to mount. If they're going to mount the drive, this is a series they this have to do it, it because this, uh, they're going to get decent field position, and uh, they're going to be rested, and uh, they're going to. Uh, coach is going to have changed a few things here. So this is a big, important series for both. D.Y. offense and Nantucket defense. And the ball comes off the tee, so we will try that again. Our third quarter of action is proudly sponsored by our good friends down on Main Street, William Ravis Real Estate, for all your real estate needs on Nantucket. Got to say hello to my good buddy, Kenny, who I know is watching. He's probably streaming it on YouTube, though. Is that Kenny uh, Higby? It is. Hi, Kenny. I saw Kenny at a meeting the other night. Kick off to a... Inside the 20, Whoa, nice cut and hole. a little bit of room for D.Y.'s return man out across the 30 to about the 33. Yeah, he made a nice little oh, side really stutter good. step there and uh, brought it right up the middle. And uh, that was one Azor more, one more bounce, one more bounce, he would have been on the outside. So first and 10 for Dennis Yarmouth, their first possession of the second half will come at the 33-yard line. Again, we'll have to see if any adjustments on the defensive side of things happen for Nantucket. Looks like the same starting defensive squad. And once again, Fitzgerald in that four wide out, lone setback position. And it is Azor once again, not really a whole lot of room, dancing his way for about four or five. I have a feeling that D.Y. is trying to set Nantucket up now with throwing underneath. Every Sooner or later, they're going to fake the underneath throw because the second guy, both defenders came right off of him and they went for the shot guy. If they do that again, he can be down the sidelines. Yeah, they have run that play a few times, no doubt about it. Well, they've got three wide outs now to Fitzgerald's left far side of the field. Snap fake and it's going to be a run from Fitzgerald. He ducks his head under and a short gain to about the 38, 39 yard line, bringing up a third and short for the first time uh, today. Yeah, <laughs> we have not said that before. Third and about four. Folks, if you're watching at home, this is a real football game. It is third and short for about the first time today. Once again, and four is not really short, but it's no, the shortest, it's still the shortest than we're third and about 20. It's the shortest we've had. Yeah. So that pro set once again, Fitzgerald awaiting the snap. He gets it and is going to be gobbled up in the backfield. Nantucket with the sack and the DY coach is furious. That's going to be a penalty. The referee throwing the flag. Well, no way he's allowed to get, get off all the way on the field like that. That's got to be unsportsmanlike conduct. That's going to cost D.Y. even more yardage, not even by a player this time. He's, he's... That is someone losing their head. Yeah. But it's interesting that the, the official in the middle of the field called. He must have yelled something out that he heard. Now I assume well, he's talking to the head coach now. Yeah, and they called, you know, they called the play dead quickly again with the whistle. And there was a Nantucket player that was basically in on the tackle anyways and it looked a little after the whistle, but he, would all, he was already in on the tackle. I'm not sure what, this guy just lost his head. There's no excuse for that. And now instead of fourth and maybe something you could go for here, it's gonna be punt. They are having a lengthy conversation about I know, this. I don't know what's <laughs> going on, 10.59 to go. So just a minute into I think the it's, second I half here. I think it's here. something along the lines of, we're both going to be on the boat together, so yeah. we got to make friends here. <laughs> but we can't stay mad at each other. Punt, indeed. 
So maybe they're gonna they're, they're gonna, gonna wave off the, the flag. They're gonna eat the flag. Maybe they gave him a warning. No flag on the play. I don't understand that either. I don't you throw the flag, you have an opinion, you throw the flag. <laughs> I mean We all saw the flag and we're told there was no fourth flag. Fourth and eight. <laughs> Uh, fourth and nine. I guess well, oh no, okay, that was a so, sack. Okay, the sack is knocked them back. The, the, the sack third knocked. sack for the Whalers defense, and they need a punter. You probably need that guy out there. And once again, Lavoy back deep for Dy. He will punt it away. He to hasn't had. The he hasn't had a great day punting. Return men, and this one will be returned by Blois, it's gonna be a fake handoff and he's got some room to run across the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, breaks a tackle and he will cut inside to the 30. And step out of bounds, otherwise it would have been the first touchdown of the season for yeah. the Warriors. Stepped out of bounds, that's what the whistle told us. Looks like it stepped out at the 41. But as you can see, he is Mr. Excitement, Justin Blois. I don't know how he got out of a couple of those uh, situations here right in front of us. It looked like two guys had him corralled and all of a sudden he's running away from them. Great return, excellent field position. Could have been a lot better, but Nantucket will still take it. We'll take it indeed. JB with a big return, bringing the ball on the DY side of things, starting first and 10 for the Whalers at the DY 40. Get him the ball again. Get Justin involved. Right. Keep him involved. Okay, let's look at the quarterback situation. Okay. It is uh, Almonte once again. So Agli is out. Almonte's our guy. First and ten for the Whalers. It'll be Almonte keeping in. He's got nothing. Those uh, fake handoffs should be handoffs. Yeah, he uh, trying to fool somebody on that fooling nobody not sure if that was a missed assignment or just uh, not a great read uh, either well, way when, it was a two-yard loss for the whalers to so make, that brings to up make the 12. fake effective they're, they're pulling the uh, the offside guy did yeah. to go with Justin for the fake but that leaves the defender standing there all alone he's and, not gonna chase the guy he's, st he's standing there all alone he's a big guy and all of a sudden the quarterback runs right into him and in that play, there was two of them. <laughs> <laughs> two big guys. Two big guys. Why? Where, did, where did two of them come from? Second and 12. As Almonte has Blois in the backfield once again. And a Two guys start. moved. Two guys moved. Always get you in trouble. Always get you in so trouble. Despite until despite the good return, the Whalers are moving the wrong way once again. This has been our typical drive all day. Where it starts off at first and 10 and goes second and longer, third and longer, punt if you have to. Yeah. Right now it's been a ugly Offensive. half, half of uh, plus football on both both offensive side. Defense holding their own, but they're giving a lot the of help. They, they're of, they're of giving penalties, a, they're but. giving a lot of help with the penalties, right? All right, so, Nantucket needs a big play here. Second in about 17. Amante back to pass. He's gonna get hit, and fortunate that it's not picked off by one of the linemen there. Yeah, Royce was, was the intended receiver, but really screen, not a chance. Screen pass in the middle. Again, dangerous. If it works, it's great, but it's uh, real dangerous. They have a lot of bodies there. They're yeah. just standing around looking. They don't know where the ball is half the time, and you're throwing right by them. And he was facing some heat, two DY defenders right in his face as yeah, he was throwing it. He was being taken down, yes. So once again, third and long. It's not longer, however. Not so longer. So third and 12, or it's 22, actually. Uh, as the Whalers are all the way back to their own, uh, the DY 47 yard line. Again, you got to think this is four down territory, but we'll it's usually see. It's usually four down territory when you cross midfield, but yeah. I don't know. An incomplete pass on another loss, yeah. and they might, uh, they might. Motion in front it. of Almonte. He rolls to his right and will throw short. 
as uh, it's short hopped to Makai Bodden, who was open at the 40 yard line, but unable to connect on the pass. Big decision here. I think Nantucket has to punt. I though. think he got a punt here, and they are bringing on the punt unit. Blois will be back deep to get the kickoff. You don't want to uh, get it too high, though. So, what could have been the touchdown with the return? The unfortunate step out of bounds turns into a, another possession where we, the Whalers will turn it over. Do we have instant replay on, I don't on think his we, foot? Yeah, I didn't see that. <laughs> if we have in we'll our other window, on we would have saw it. It was right in front of us That's at right. the other window. Good snap. Blois, good kick. High. See, too high. Over too high. Let's see if it'll bounce our way. It does. Yeah. And down at an inside the 20. So he gets an inside the 20 punt. Decent out of it. Get up in the air though, and it just stalled. If he had that with the wind, it would have rode about. Kind of like my golf yeah. shots. I get him up there way too high, and it just kind of stalls. Oh, you're bragging now. I don't. I didn't even get my golf shots up in the air. No, no bragging. That's not fair. <laughs> so first and ten for the second possession of the second half for Dy. We are at zero zeros. Eight fourteen to play here in the third quarter. Another big thank you to William Ravis Real Estate for sponsoring our third quarter of play here on NCTV 18. Fitzgerald takes the snap and hands it off. To Azor trying the edge. He's got a little bit of room out across the 20. Give him about four to the 22 yard line. Yeah, that's a lot of, lot of running there to get to the corner. Nantucket uh, is, is too quick. I don't, I don't, th quick I don't think you can uh, run plays like that and expect to get much more than that. They, they, uh, they have too much speed, even if they get uh, faked out, they, they make up for it. A nice crowd today to support the Whalers, and they are loud. We can hear them. When there's a play to cheer for, they are letting it be known. They, uh, they were really excited on the, uh, the call back of the touchdown yeah. when he stepped out of bounds because nobody saw it, uh, and they saw him dancing into the end zone, so they thought the score was on the board. Fitzgerald motion in front, and that will be too much motion once Why again. That's double figures and penalties <laughs> for Dennis Yarmouth. I don't even know if they have 10 offensive plays. Well, they do, but you know. Illegal motion will march him back five yards, and once again, second and long. It'll be about second and 12, maybe 11. I do, I do a mismatch of stats. I don't do every stat. That's why we call but, it unofficial. Un, it's very, <laughs> unofficial very unofficial. But I, I, I lean on something. If, if a running back's having a great yeah. day, I lean on him. If the quarterback's having a great throw, I lean on him. Today, what am I leaning on? Penalties. Penalties. That's penalties. Not, I'm, that's keeping not track good. Of, I'm keeping track of penalties for both teams. It's not an exciting <laughs> stat to keep, but motion in front of Fitzgerald once again, faking the handoff, looking deep. He will throw deep and overthrow everyone. That was Justin Blois on the coverage. The receiver had a step on him. He that got, was, he uh, got behind Jayden him. Yeah. Moore. First time we're calling him. He is a senior wideout, one of the bright spots for DY, but uh, unfortunately Fitzgerald had him overthrown and that's that long play you that's were talking the, about. Yeah, uh, he did get behind him. I would like to I would like to see that on the sideline though, rather than the middle of the field, but you get a good look at the middle of the field and you control the ball a little bit, but Justin uh, was with him, although if the pass was there, the, he could have caught it. Third and 11 for Dennis Yarmouth. They might come back with something very similar. 644 to play here in the third quarter and another quick throw and dropped, running before you catch it. That was again, Jaden Moore, the intended receiver. Well, he wasn't gonna get a first down. He wasn't gonna get a first down unless he broke a tackle, but you gotta catch the ball before you run. Yeah. So punt formation for DY deep in their own territory. This should be good field position once again for the Whalers as it's both Makai Bodden and Justin Blois deep to receive the punt. DY does not have a good uh, kicker, that's for sure. And as I say that, maybe we'll get off his best of the day. He hasn't got off a good one yet. Well, they're he, missing a guy. Maybe it's the snapper. No, not the snapper, but the guard. Uh, with the win, though, they should get uh, oh, oh! snap over his head. Trouble. Gets, he gets the kickoff. Off. Fantastic play just to get the kickoff. And it's Baden inside the 40, 30, 25, 
20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Whalers! So it was a great play just to get the punt off, but... A better play by Justin Boyce, who takes it to the house. I'm going to say that was about 44, somewhere in there, right about this side of the field. We'll call it a 44. Justin Boyce with the excitement on the punt return. A little bit of justice, I guess, there, because yes. he had one here called back because he stepped out of bounds, a, a tiptoe out of bounds able to keep himself in bounds and break a couple of shake a couple of tacklers i should say they didn't really get a good look at him and take it to the house timeout whalers as they will see about maybe a two-point oh, conversion whoa. gather themselves they, after they, the big yeah play. they might want to talk even if they're going to kick it though you want you want to cool justin down if he's your kicker so even That's if you true. kick it you cool him down so he's ready to kick it you know the defense looking at a possible safety which would have been great uh, tackle, Great play tackle, by getting Lavoie the ball themselves, I mean, but the punter, he had he had wills behind him. Yeah. He stepped around two kids. I thought he was going to try to run the ball. He steps around two kids and then gets the punt off. I mean, a great effort just to get the punt off, no doubt. But uh, I've seen punters do that and, and then throw the ball, right? Just so you get the line of the scrimmage. Line of scrimmage, yeah. But that was a great punt. Nothing wrong with that. He even got the roll. Um, but Blois with the special play, as we noted, he is a special player. Get him in some open field and he can make magic happen and he will score the first touchdown of the 2021 campaign for the Whalers, taking that 40 yard punt to pay dirt. And uh, we'll see what the Whalers come up with, whether they decide to kick it or go for the two point conversion here. A lot of talking over this and it might be a play on, yeah. the, on the... But as you said, just gather your composure here. What I would like coming out of this would be the fake kick. You line up in the kick, and then you run your fake off it. Makai Baden is taking going, the snap here. This so be, this is a special play. He's gonna run to the right. He's gonna run to the right. Oh, and gonna, he keeps it himself. Not a lot of room, but he squeaks in for the two points. Good job by Baden. So Makai Baden with the Wildcat formation takes it in himself and the Whalers take an 8-0 lead with 6.25 to play here in the third quarter. That is our first scoring play of the afternoon as D.Y. missed a field goal just at the end of the first half. So Nantucket taking advantage of a missed snap it's always good to have it's, snap. it's always good to have the uh, the Wildcat uh, quarterback in your offense. I I thought are you a big Patriots fan? You know I was born and raised in Cleveland, Cleveland. but I am a Patriots fan because I root for the home team. But, uh, but I, I have I, to call myself a big Browns fan. Browns fan. But. but I always thought in the back of my head that Luck would be the quarterback eventually. But Newton would be a great guy to come in as a on, on a two or the three yard line, just as as Borden did as a there. weapon. As a weapon, but uh, it, it didn't work out. And uh, again, if they were as smart as you and I. I mean, <laughs> although, Cleveland uh, Browns, yeah, I yeah. I follow them a little bit. Well, I was brought, be an I was interesting story this year. I'll I'll tell you that much. It'll I, be an interesting story for them. I love. So Boyce them. is getting a breather. Jeremy Casp is going to be doing the kickoff. He plays tight end and defensive end as well. Nice to see him out there, and he's got a leg as well, so this should be a good kick. A low liner that bounces and is fielded at about the 20, out across the 30, and Azor fumbles, able to gather it up. Too and much a in penalty. Too much indecision on that. Why put a kid back there who uh, is going to dance around and look? You, you, you want to pick up the ball and run forward. Let's see what the flag is. On the flag is holding or face mask it's on the Nantucket. So that'll be unnecessary roughness. That'll be a 15 yarder, so. That makes it a good return. A good. Uh, Ball now all the way out across the 40 to the 43 yard line of good, Dennis Yarmouth. Good first field, and 10. Good field position after that scenario. Another mistake with Another the penalty. penalty. D.Y. quickly to the line. Once again, that four wide out set 
single setback with Fitzgerald. Proud into it with an eight nothing lead now for the Whalers. Another deep yeah, throw. There's your sideline deep throw. Oh, that's, oh, it's a penalty. It's going to be interference. Drag them down. So that, I believe, in high school is just 15 yards. Uh oh, this here though could be offsetting. This could oh, be we've offsetting. Got a flag back. <laughs> this could be offsetting <laughs> at the line. So offsetting plays offsetting. here. Offsetting. And Makai Bodden gets off the hook because he definitely was grabbing him the whole way. But again, you save the touchdown with you the save, penalty. You save the, yeah, save the touchdown. He doesn't grab him. The kid runs under it. That's the play that I think uh, has been open for them, especially if they can get, especially if they can get the uh, either Bodden or JB to, to step up for that looking for the short yep. guy. Yep. I didn't see where he came from, but he did have a step on Bodden going down the sideline. All right, offsetting penalty. So nothing happened there. First and so, ten once again for DUI. So even though you're all sitting in your chair at home watching, <laughs> nothing happened. Just wiped that out. Once again, four wide receiver set for Dennis Yarmouth. And it's Fitzgerald fielding the high snap. Throw to the sideline, caught. And stays in bounds inside the 40 to the 35. Breaking the tackle was Jaden Moore there. Got to wrap up there, Makai. Yeah, yeah, I just uh, just gave him a push to push him out of bounds, and uh, he sort of tight roped, and then picks up another eight or nine yards. So first and ten at the 31 yard line, 34 yard line, excuse me. Dennis Yarmouth quickly to the line. 6:03 in the third quarter. 8-0 our score as the Whalers punch it in on the punt return and the two-point conversion. Fitzgerald back to pass. Another quick sh throw, a little wide and out of the reach of number 23, David Azor. Once again, it has been a two-man show, Azor and Moore for DY. Those are the two senior wideouts. Again, he was a little hesitant on that. It was the same kid on the kickoff that was hesitant about it. So. Uh... Second and 10 for Dennis Yarmouth inside the Whalers, 35 at the 33-yard line. They've probably given up the running game except for the quarterback Blitz taking. coming, and a nice pass. Again, Azor's got some room, and we'll have another first down for Dennis Yarmouth. Forward well, progress started about, stopped at about the 22-yard line. He made up for the bad play in the play before, and uh, does a good job on that one. Uh, looks like a couple of players slow getting up. And that is Azor, who was the receiver. And also Sean Murphy gimping off a little bit. So I just got news that if uh, you happen to not catch the broadcast live today, we're rebroadcasting tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning, so you can start your football day nine on Sunday morning. at 9 o'clock. Just to get it in in time for any pregame show or fantasy football you got to do before the big games on Sunday. I just got to check. There's no game from London tomorrow? <laughs> no game. Nothing from London. No. It was just the Thursday, and uh, good, good A's thing. are hobbling off. Good he thing. Good thing we're not doing a leg. If we do this, if we do this in October, we'll be up against the London <laughs> game. That's true. <laughs> Nine o'clock tomorrow, folks. That's a have, nice early start to have, football. I have, like it. Have you have your coffee with Dick and That's Chris? That's right. That's <laughs> right. So first and ten for Dy, after a good catch from Azor and run for first down. He is on the sideline getting some treatment. So Fitzgerald down one of his key players. Again, Bennett with his arms up and denies. Uh-oh, but comes up hobbling. He comes up hobbling. That looks like maybe a leg. Definitely a leg. Oh, no. Definitely he a leg. I, and he, uh, I don't came know down if he awkwardly. Went. He could have come down awkwardly, or he could have come down on the uh, the shoe of the uh, yeah the kid that was blocking him. Looks like maybe a cramp. They're trying to stretch him out, That's so that might be something that he can get it's back in the game here. I'm not a doctor, but I don't think it's broken. <laughs> no, it's, not, it's definitely not broken, but <laughs> that is the worst, though. Again, these kids haven't played this much as of yet, you know. 
So uh, yeah, and we're not even to the we're not yeah, into the fourth quarter and, yet. And you know? tramping could be an issue. But a great play once again. Got his hands up, hit him in the chest uh, as the pass was a little low from Fitzgerald. I think but that's I think, two bat downs for JJ I'm, I'm, Bennett. I'm going to go out on a limb and say JJ is going to have an interception this year. Right just on, on a that play. Just yeah. on a similar play like that. Because he does get his hands up there. And after he gets used to doing that, yeah. he's going to start seeing the ball coming his way a little bit better. So unable to really put a lot, any weight on it, but he has given the thumbs up to the crowd. So looks like he will be okay. Get him some water. That's a heck of a skill yeah. there, I leaving know. the field on one foot. Well, we don't have to do that. <laughs> 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 we make it about one hop, and that's about it. All right, trips left for second down and 10. D.Y. Fitzgerald, you're handing it off to the big up back, and he will rumble ahead for close to first down yardage. That's one of the best non-quarterback runs today by uh, D.Y. That was Alex Sheffield-White with about seven yards, bringing up third and short. See, they, they might like that. They might like that and, and yeah. use that again. They, they might want to get the first down here by keeping the ball on the ground. DY with pretty much their best drive of the game, overall drive. A couple of great throws from Fitzgerald connecting as we approach 430 left in the third quarter. Another run by that same Sheffield White this time. The Whalers snuff it out and that'll bring up fourth down and you got to think they're going to go for it here. Definitely going to go for it. The now they got to decide, nothing. Now they gotta decide whether they want to uh, run it or throw it. I think the option will be the quarterback rolling out option, run and pass. You like Fitz, two options. You like Fitzgerald two options. definitely back into the huddle, and he brings them up quickly. Fourth down and four. Let's see if those Whalers can hold them here and get the ball back as we approach four minutes left in the third quarter. Fitzgerald back to pass. Quick pass. Caught. And he will break a tackle and go into the end zone for a touchdown. touchdown. 23. Another big fourth down play. And that was once again David Azor recovering from his cramp to break a tackle and take it into the end zone. And he is still hobbled, but enough to score for Dennis Yarmouth. And again, it looks like they will be going for two here to try and tie it up. Yeah, there's no reason to go for one when you're yep. down by two. So this is now a big play for Nantucket. Even though you just gave up a touchdown, you can make a big play right here you keep and the, keep you the lead. Keep the lead. Keep the lead is important. Huge, huge play for the Whalers. Fitzgerald, loan back. He'll throw it. Quick throw. Over the middle. Incomplete. And the Whalers will hold. No good on the two-point conversion. So the score now eight to six as both offenses, well, special teams for the Whalers came up with the touchdown, but uh, DY with their best drive of the day by far with yeah. the fourth down touchdown pass from Fitzgerald. Yeah, DY has to be happy with that drive. So that gives them a, a, give them a lot of confidence when they get the ball back. Now the, their job is to go out and shut the Whalers down and get the ball back. The Tuckett's still got the lead, but uh, the Tuckett could put this game away if they score another one with another two-point conversion because that makes it a two-score game. Still plenty of football with a whole quarter and four minutes, 357 left here in the third quarter uh, as we've finally got some offensive action to talk about. Uh, Fitzgerald, again, looks very comfortable throwing the ball back there. A couple of knockdowns from Bennett and a couple of overthrows early, but otherwise he's been pretty much on target. And David Azor, who was hurt on a first down catch and run, came back on fourth down and 12 to a score a huge, touchdown. Huge fourth down Two play. Two huge fourth down plays. They had that fourth and 16 that almost scored as well but in that, the first quarter. But now you gotta, you gotta factor in the 12 minute period. So we're gonna yep. be heading into the fourth quarter Fatigue. Uh, and uh, early in the fourth quarter would be the 40 minute mark, which a normal game is. But Oh, onside kick. Fielded and wisely going down immediately is Owen Wilson. Interesting call there. Let me guess the call. One more bounce and one it might have been. One more bounce and it would have been quite interesting. I know last year, that first game of the season, we had one where the kid just kicked it right into the 
line of the Whalers, and they got the recovery, but uh, this was definitely on purpose. Owen, uh, Owen did a great job there, fielding it, and as you're saying, going right down. Don't yeah. try to do anything with it. Wisdom for a junior, and he, is, uh, he would be on the hands team anyways as a wide receiver. So the uh, Whalers will take over with good field position at their own 46-yard line. Once again, El Monte in, so... Aguilar obviously suffered some sort of injury. That he's uh, he's definitely done for the day. We see we see Bennett over there trying to trying to get himself ready to get back in. Return, and it's a double handoff inside, breaking a tackle, and off to the races. Great run by Griffin Fox. His first carry is for 24 yards and a Whaler first down. Boyce got the handoff and a little reverse inside run. Sneaky play call inside, by Jim Saradellis. Inside Nicely handoff, done. yeah. Inside handoff is a tough play to defend. Uh, you gotta make, you gotta make uh, the handoff. And uh, Boyce did a great job. Actually, doing 18 it. yards on the carry there from Griffin Fox. Nice play call there. I like that one. First and ten at the DY 35-yard line. And again, it's Blois. He's in trouble. And yeah, they try to they seven. try to set the uh, they try to set the defense with the uh, the fake this time, but they didn't buy it. And, and uh, once again, Justin is holding a leg. That's a five, in the game. five yard. Oh, maybe not. Six yard loss. Official timeout. Yeah, they want them. To, they want As someone to check Justin. JB's got what may be a cramp as well. He'll try and walk it off, but refusing the help. He doesn't a, want to go out, but he's uh, a tough kid. He's having a hard time getting off the field. Once again, looks like maybe a cramp. Get him some water. Hopefully, he'll be okay because uh, he is the weapon with the lone score on the punt return for Nantucket. Second and 16 here now, without, uh, without two of their offensive weapons not in the game. They're not going, I, I was thinking maybe the Wildcat, we, we saw the two points, but not yet. Not yet. Now Monte throwing underneath. And oh! caught on the deflection, Cass pulls it in, and that'll be close to first down yardage for Nantucket. Excellent awareness, and a flag comes in late. So that pass, I think, went out of Barton's hand, out of a defender's hand, into Casp's hand. Very good awareness, and Casp is hobbling over. Oh, roughing on D.Y. So another 15 yards on that. Or maybe half, half the distance, because we'll see how they march it off here. That will be a full 15 yards, my friends. First and 10, Whalers at the 12-yard line of Dennis Yarmouth. Once again, D.Y. shooting themselves in the foot. After giving up a big play, they add 15 on top of it. And the Whalers are in business here at the 12-yard line. Almonte, shotgun formation, low snap, and he fumbles. And Dennis Yarmouth all over him as that play will lose about seven or eight yards, depending on where they spot it. Luckily, it's just a loss and not a turnover That's there. true. It's the ball was on the ground, and uh, his first reaction was to try to pick it up, and that's not usually the best thing to do when the ball was on the ground. It works sometimes. Most of the time, it gets pushed away. It makes it worse. <laughs> it makes it a worse situation here. So 126 and counting here in the third quarter, which has turned out to be quite an exciting third quarter. We had a punt return for a touchdown for the Whalers, two-point conversion converted by Makai Bodden. Dennis Yarmouth comes right back on their next possession and punches it in as uh, Azor was able to score on fourth down, bringing it to an eight to six count. The Whalers holding a tentative two-point lead. And a nice grab by Makai Barton. He breaks the tackle and will take it in for the Whalers. Touchdown. Big time pass there. Great play by Barton. No flags. No flags. <laughs> we haven't said that too often today. Almonte with a, uh, for me, it's Bernie Kosar-esque sidearm 
throw and on the money. Baden was able to snag it out of midair and break the tackle and take it in for the touchdown. 14 to six now the lead for the Whalers. You score, Under a minute to play. You score here on this two-point conversion, and that puts a lot of pressure on DY because then they have to score twice. Twice. So that big play on the uh, two-point conversion, missed opportunity for DY to tie it up. Now looms large and also a missed field goal. So let's see what Nantucket, see if they have Bond. Yeah, Bond's back in there. Looks like that Wildcat formation. And timeout Nantucket. That's their second timeout already this this half. So just I, one left for Coach Perry. They weren't sure, I think, on what the call was. I'm not, I think, but uh, they're going to talk about it again. <clears throat> but uh, if Borden stays in there, quarterback, and the Wildcat look for a very similar play of him running the ball. Someone's trying to wave to you down there. <laughs> Well, 56 seconds here to go in the third quarter. So far, 20 points here in the third An quarter. An exciting third quarter to play. After <clears throat> zero points in the first half. So uh, both teams coming alive offensively. So we'll see what uh, the Whalers have here uh, if they decide to kick this or go for two once again. <clears throat> that Wildcat formation worked for them the last time. Baden kept it and uh, snuck it in for a two-pointer. Let's see how Justin's feeling if they're going to do the kick. That's true. I don't think he's been back in since he left. Well, Baden's going to Wildcat it again. There you go. And he, of course, was the quarterback for the entire season last year, so this is not unfamiliar territory for him. And uh, he will hand it off on a run-pass option. No room to run, though, for... Uh, Sean Murphy there, and the two-point conversion fails. So keeps but still it an eight-point lead, so they do have to score a touchdown and, and get the two-point conversion to just tie. Uh, so the Whalers will take that 14-6 lead, most likely into the fourth quarter as we just have 56 seconds to play here in the third quarter. And once again, our third quarter sponsor William Ravis Real Estate, right down on Main Street. Beautiful office over there. I don't know if you've been down there, but they have a. I haven't been right in. Right on the I've, corner of Main Street there in South Beach. Really nice office. I, I still can't get over uh, Norby Shop not being there. But, I know. But it is, uh, I've looked in the window and it's a, a great location and a great office. But the times they are changing. The times they have a changed already, <laughs> but uh, they continue to change as well. And, uh, you know. We roll with those changes. You got to, you got to. But they do a great job. I know quite a bit of the folks, quite a few of the folks over there, and uh, they do a fantastic job handling those wonderful Nantucket properties out here. So, <clears throat> so Casp in for the kickoff, so Blois still sidelined thus far. Well, it's certainly not a good idea to have him kick the ball. No, if no he's, need. If he's having Especially a Especially because you have Jeremy there, and he has uh, done kickoff and punting duties. Uh, last year, so why not? No reason to risk anything further. Short end over end kick. That will be fielded at about the 30, cutting outside and running out of room around the 38 yard line. That was more on the return for Dennis Yarmouth. They will get the ball first and 10 at their own 37 yard line, call it. 36 yard line call well, it. Well Nantucket's going to be in great shape here if this uh, score seconds. holds because they'll go into the fourth quarter with an eight point lead and the win. And the win. An interesting choice by Dennis Yarmouth to it, defer it was. the wind and not have it in the fourth quarter. <laughs> they have however taken advantage of the wind thus far. You might try something long here too. To they they might. They might try to get the try and keep that wind. Here you go. Down. And it's a short pass and a nice tackle. Excellent tackle by Sean Murphy. Right on the numbers. And the clock will continue to run. Open field tackle, only a gain of three, bringing up second and seven for Dennis Yarmouth. And once again, Fitzgerald has been slinging it today. 
Only a handful of running plays for D.Y. He's going to throw it again here. This could, sure. be, this could be the last play unless it's an incomplete pass. Bennett looking to get after the quarterback for the Whalers. And it, pressure is in. Deep pass downfield. Ooh. Uh, incomplete. <laughs> he got away with a little was something there. Little but I think the ref looked at the throw, and that was just uncountable. Yeah. So five seconds to play here in the third quarter. They got a chance to maybe throw one more deep one. But, one more uh, deep. Yeah, the quarterback. Third, uh, third and seven, so. The quarterback did not anticipate the receiver to stop there. But again, that's one of those where you, you may be getting a pass interference, and you never know. Now, now would be a good idea to, to fake the sideline, yeah. stop and go, and send somebody right Four through the middle. Four wideouts once again for Fitzgerald. Third and eight. Blitz coming. Pressure. It's a screen pass set up. And unable to break a tackle and make anything out of it was Tony White, junior well, running back. That was a good. Down. That was a good blitz. Good call by and a, uh, the defense, and White is down. He has not moved much. We'll have to see what happened to him. Didn't look like anything crazy. I'm think, assuming tackle. I but think it's a lot of cramping going could on be. right now. Because everyone seems could to be, be having a very similar. Yep. Yep. He is yeah. definitely yelling like it's a cramp. So clock is stopped, but zeros read on the scoreboard as we have reached the end of three quarters of play here at Vito Capito Stadium. Your Whalers holding a 14 to six lead, able to put it in the end zone twice in the quarter, once via special teams with the punt return from Justin Blois taking what could have been a safety and uh, the punter did an excellent job just getting it off. Uh, but uh, the coverage team unable to bring Blois down as he returned it about 30 yards for the touchdown. Baden converting the two-point conversion, and he also snagged a pass from El Monte, taking it to the house for the other Whaler touchdown, about 19 yards on that touchdown play. The lone score for Dennis Yarmouth coming via the pass. David Azor hauling in a pass from Fitzgerald and taking it to the house on fourth down. So big play for Dennis Yarmouth, keeping them in this game, really. Yeah, that's, it's the uh, one score difference. But right now it's uh, a lot of uh, injuries starting to mount up here. And uh, no one seems that concerned about this uh, player who uh, is having his legs stretched out up there. Now he's going to get up. He's getting up, but those Very cramps slowly. take a few minutes to work themselves out, even if you get some water right away. So he is okay, able to put weight on it. Again, a cramp for sure. So we're gonna have a fourth down here. 12 minutes left to go in this one. Our fourth quarter is proudly presented by our great friends out west, Matticut Marine. Matticut Marine. Serving Nantucket Island and its waters for over 50 years. That's a great drive out there, but it's a commitment. Once you get out there, that's it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so fourth down at about six or seven for DY at their own 40. Pressure coming. Fitzgerald able to get the pass off, and that is caught! A battle for the ball and caught by Dennis Yarmouth. But it looked like that could have been an interception. Well, that's a gutsy call because they're on this side of the field going for it for one thing, and then for the second thing, Another big I thought play. it was uh, intercepted. Yeah, there was a battle for the ball between. Uh, I think Baden Nantucket and, had it. I think Nantucket had it first. Yeah. And but the ball was right there. Both their hands are out, and the rece receiver had enough instinct to keep direct chunking on it, and he finally uh, got it away from Borden. I think Borden had that. Heck of a play either way, and D.Y. stays alive as they have the ball now on the Nantucket side of the field at the 42-yard line. Motion in front of Fitzgerald. Fumbles the snap, gathers his feet, trying to get the edge. Cuts inside, inside the 40 to 34 or 36-yard line. Well, he makes something out of nothing something there. Something out of nothing indeed. Wow, that went from a turnover to a loss to a gain. 
And that fourth down play, again, made by Jaden Moore, senior wideout. He comes off the field here for a moment, but wrestled the ball out of Baden's hands. What should have been at least a fourth down turnover, you know? Easily, easily could have been. Turnover on down. So here we are, second down at about six at the 38 yard line of Nantucket. Three wide outs split out to the far side of the field to the right of Fitzgerald. Gets the snap, rolling to the right. Throwing to nobody. Bad pass. Yeah, that I don't know. His lone bad he, pass really of the day. I don't know well, what he was, was thinking bad. on that play. That was a duck. <laughs> he had the well, he, he had the guy breaking uh, towards the end zone, and he threw it under him like it was almost supposed to be a curl that he was going to come back for. Fortunate that was not intercepted, really, but uh, no one in the <laughs> vicinity, and that'll bring up another third down, about six for a first down, yep. obviously uh, DY will go for it because they've gone for it on every yeah, fourth down pretty much that was almost, in general. That was almost throwing it away. And Jane Moore still out on the sidelines here. Again, could be some fatigue. But Gerald, quick pass over the middle behind the wide receiver there, no chance. <laughs> and that will bring up that fourth down as we noted, fourth and six for Dennis Yarmouth. <laughs> well, if the DY- Moore now getting back in the game. If you're the DY co coach, you're saying, we have Nantucket just where we just want. Just where you want them. <laughs> they come up with a few big plays on fourth down. Fourth down has been there. Uh, Let's see if Nantucket day. can close one out here and uh, get the ball back with 10.28 to play here in the fourth quarter. 14-6 to six our score. Whalers holding an eight-point lead. Once again, this has been the set that they have had all day. Four wideouts, two on either side of Fitzgerald. Lone running back and back to pass. Throwing for the sidelines and it is caught. No, incomplete. Wow, good effort though to try and get it. That was a dangerous pass all the way to the far sideline and that will turn it over. And the Whalers take over and the defense holds a little bit curious on the play call on that. I'm, Tough throw. I mean, that is if, a... If, if rolling, you're not even rolling, and you're throwing into the wind. Uh, you would think something quick for, something for that Something quick, of play. or you get your quarterback in position if, to roll that way, yeah. where he can run yeah, give him and an option. see the receiver a little bit better. So first and 10 Whalers, they do take over at the 38-yard line. But I'm not coaching. So uh, that, well, that's why they put me up here. We're even better, though. Second guessers <laughs> is what we get to be. <laughs> it's more fun. We get to be second guessers. Well, Nantucket can uh, put this game out of reach if they can get a drive going Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Either way, you got to think the ball on the ground here runs some clock. Get the clock down. And with your backup quarterback as well. We have a backup backup quarterback in here. Who's that this guy? That is true. Oh no, that is Aguilar back in the game. Okay. There you go. They changed it back up on us. So Aguilar is able to return. I'm looking, for, a, looking for 11, I didn't see him. That's right. I never thought to look for four. So that's a good sign. That is a good sign. He unfortunately went out of bounds there on that play. Probably should have stayed in bounds to keep that clock rolling. A short gain, if any. Bringing up second and nine, call it. Maybe he's getting uh, a little talking to there on the sidelines. Make sure you stay in bounds stay at least. Stay in bounds. Let's run the clock. Nice to see Aguilar back in there, though. Never want to see a kid go out. And uh, he can try and finish this one up and uh, wrap it up for the Ray Whalers here and uh, come away with a hard-fought victory. You get a, Yeah, you Let's get see. a drive going. You could score at the end of it, or at least you can take some time off the clock. So. Good if they can get a drive going. Single set back, get... Aguilar back to pass. There's J.J. Bennett, big boy in the middle. Flag down. Flag down. Big catch That's there, in the big time, big time catch. He is a catch. big target. Flag on the play. That was a big time catch. Good hands from the big fellow there too. Oh, ineligible downfield. Downfield. 
So that will erase a big gain once again. That's a tough call for high school football. Tough call. So that brings it all the way back to the original line of scrimmage and we'll go five more yards back, bringing up another second and very long for Nantucket. Just over 10 minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. So a huge uh, play there wiped out. Yeah. Cross midfield, first down the whole bit. Now it's second and 15. Aguilar back once again. Bennett split far left. And he's looking for a quick pass to Makai Badu shakes a tackler, shakes another one, cuts inside. Spinning and not getting much out of it, but uh, could have been worse. A lot of duking there, getting around. A lot around of duking and, and duking. And, uh, but a short gain. Maybe Bringing one up third yard. Long. Maybe one yard. So. Maybe a yard on that one, yep. But Nantucket needs, oh, they probably need to get the first down here. I, I can't see them going for it yeah. on this side of the field. Coach Perry did, did note that, you know, he's got confidence in that defense. If he faces something like this, a fourth and, you know, five or six maybe, punt it and let the defense do its job. Two wide outs to the left side. Aguilar looking deep, throwing deep. Got oh, it open. open. And holds it in. And he will take it to the house for another Warriors touchdown. 65 yards on that one. What a throw. And Vaughn got way behind him. Way no behind chance. him. chance. Huge play on third and long. The score now 20 to six. Is that a, some type of a, <laughs> what is it? I, a little some, siren of some, some sort from some fans out there I, celebrating the Whalers touchdown. I thought somebody was starting up their motorcycle here or something to leave the field. Big time, Wow. big time pass. Great. Uh, Great play call and a good job by uh, Bond to finish it off. Great throw by Aguilar. Again, coming off the injury. Fantastic stuff there. And uh, looks like another timeout gonna have to be called as Nantucket had some players that shouldn't have been on the field. So that could be their last timeout. With 9.13 to play here, it looked like they were going for two once again. Yeah, they're up by 14. You get, you, get a, you get another two, you go up by 16. Yeah. So then you you force, it's a two-score game, but you got to score four, four times. Four times, really, yeah, with the two-point conversion. So you put a lot of pressure on uh, D.Y. So this this is a, uh, a huge situation here for uh, the D.Y. defense. And Nantucket could really put the icing on the cake with a, uh, the two a conversion here. Yeah. Nobody's left. Everybody's still here. Put your helmet on and stop slamming it on the ground. Are you kidding me? Dennis Young with uh, Coach uh, a little upset at the frustration from one of their linemen. No, but yeah. uh, it's uh, stop it on the ground. understandable as they have gone down by 14 here with the chance. Yet. Of uh, a little more here if the Whalers can punch it in here on the two point conversion. Aguilar, direct snap to Blois. And another good tackle denying the two point conversion. All right, so Nantucket. So 20 to 6, our score here with 9.13 to play in the game. But Nantucket has the win, kicking off with the win, so DY is going to have to score twice going into the win. Huge play call on third and long to go for the that was beautiful, bomb beautiful. there. I mean, that was just a straight up deep yep. throw from the get-go. Throw it up and let Mackay run underneath it, and he did, calling yep. in that 65-yard touchdown pass. Definitely a missed assignment on somebody on the DY side. To well, it was one-on-one -on -one coverage, but it uh, didn't matter because uh, Baden was behind all of it. A 
although not a not a conference game, a big win nonetheless. If yeah. the Whalers can hold on here. The rating system, which is in effect yeah. this year, uh, the top uh, 16 teams in each division, the Nantucket's in Division 7, yep. get into a playoff yeah, format, which will possibly get them another home game late in October, but at least another game. Right. You get points for wins, and you get points for beating teams above you. So right. this would be a huge thing. This yeah. would throw Nantucket into a, uh, a top position in the conference. And Justin Blois back doing kicking duties, so he is back to at least, uh, you know, close to 100%, and a low squib kick fielded oh. and immediately down at the 27-yard line. That's where Dennis Yarmouth will get another possession here with 9-11. Yeah, a little bit of a desperate, so they got a score here. Yeah, not a good decision there by number 11. I think he slipped. Looked like he kind of slipped, but yeah, you would think he could... Uh, gotten that one and uh, maybe advanced it a little bit. No one around him. No one around him. And uh, as you said, EY has to score. They're, they're running out of opportunities. They have to score to get this back to a one score uh, ball game. And then potentially hold Nantucket after that. Looking for uh -oh. Arsenal. Another player running in late here for Dennis Yarmouth. As they will look to get things going. And another, yet another player. Fitzgerald after what was. Ooh. Oh boy. That is a good tackle though. The on the top of the world. <laughs> aggressive tackle a very there. Very aggressive tackle. Justin Zedroga. Heck of a if, uh, legal tackle there. If he does, <laughs> took him off his feet. If he doesn't quickly bring, to the line. If he doesn't bring him down, yeah, 23, he's got some room. 23's got some Second room and four, run. a running play by Dennis Yarmouth. Interesting play call there. Not much going on as well as Nantucket yeah. was able to read it. Zadroga in on the tackle again. Now I looked at the DY defensive linemen. They seem to be big boys. I'm looking at the offensive guys. They're not that big. And Quicker, yeah. The Nantucket's uh, defensive line is uh, really outplaying. They have some big boys on that line for sure with Cast and Bennett. Fitzgerald taking the shotgun snap once again. Quick throw. Caught and immediately down on his knees. That's a first down. Let's see if they give him first down yardage here. Real close. Might have to bring the chains out, we'll see. No, they give Clock it. is running here, 8-10, and counting first down. They give it to him, nice call. They, uh, they they're up ready to go. They know the clock's against them. They, they yeah. gotta get a score in a hurry. Fitzgerald with plenty of time, looking deep. Might be a hold there, no flag. And almost Ooh. intercepted. Great effort by Jaquan Francis, sophomore. It's tough Made a to, nice break on the ball, almost came up with a big play. That definitely would have sealed it for Nantucket. Yeah, it's tough to get a lot of zip on the ball when you're rolling left. Across the body and there, throwing, yeah. And throwing across, and uh, the Nantucket defender, as you say, almost iced the game. Right now, the DY coach is not a happy not camper. Not a happy camper. Just, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> and rightfully so. His team has... Made maybe, a lot of mistakes. Maybe when the boost, a maybe mistakes. when a boost club delivers the pizzas after they'll the be game, a little happier. They'll be maybe. a little bit happier. He could that, be hangry. That might that, <laughs> might that might calm him down. I don't know. I think the score is going to irk him on that long boat ride home. Second and ten. Fitzgerald with another quick pass, high and over the head of Moore, the intended receiver. That'll bring up third down. Obviously in four down territory as things are getting a little more desperate for the Dolphins. Down 20 to six with just 7:48 to play here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you hate to say this is four-down territory, but yeah, but I, I can't see them punting the ball, no. which they haven't done well today, into the wind. Not a lot of time, not enough time for two stops and two scores, you know. So let's see what uh, the Dolphins come up with here for a play call. Fitzgerald with uh, roll the quarterback right. Roll them right, here. not left. They roll them left, roll them right. Whalers showing blitz, they do come. And 
Fitzgerald's in trouble and will be corralled way back at the 21-yard line. Another sack by the Whalers defense. Now you might have to punt just to get the ball back to the original of the scrimmage. That's true. Let's see what the call is. And it is a punt formation being called from the sideline. Not happily, I might add. Not happily. 7.15 and counting as things uh, are looking good for our Whalers as they get the ball back and can basically just uh, run some clock here. But uh, this is where they scored one of their touchdowns. Again, Justin Boyce taking oh, the ball. And this should not be a long That's kickoff. Anytime there's a kick. A long punt. Anytime there's a kick, man. Spiral. Talk and uh, they're going to let it bounce. What's he doing? Downing the ball should have just gotten away. Yeah, that but was... fortunate, Sean Murphy almost created <laughs> one of those mental mistakes. But fortunately for Nantucket, they just down it at the 47-yard line. Good field position to start the drive for Nantucket. Maybe that was going to be the Fumbalewski. Fumbalewski, yeah. You pick up the ball and you shuffle it to Bond. It runs left and hands it to JB, you know? It's those plays you make up in the uh, gym on Coach rainy Machado days. <laughs> just about had a heart attack on the sidelines <laughs> over there with that play. But fortunately for the Whalers, nothing comes about. And uh, even more fortunately, fortunate for them, Carlos Aguilar back behind center, albeit in a shotgun formation right now. Boyce in the backfield joining him. And passing, once again, deep throw. And incomplete, good coverage that time. Flag on the play. Flag on the play once again. That surprised me. And Baden looks like he's cramping up now. That surprised me. I think this is on Nantucket, but surprised me that they're throwing the ball on first down. Again, incomplete pass stops the clock. Sack, is a lot could go wrong. If you just hand it off, at least the clock keeps running if you get yeah. stopped. But yeah, you, you play the clock. You play the clock. You get a 14-point lead, you play the clock. Five men in the backfield for the Whaley. Five yard penalty. Five men in the backfield. So someone lined up incorrectly. Somebody was off the ball off too the much. Ball, yeah. So a formation penalty makes it first and 15. 6.44 to play here and what has been a very exciting second half after what was yeah, it wipes out a the very uh, ugly wipes, first half. It wipes out the ugliness of the first half for sure. Motion behind Aguilar. Oh my goodness, fumble. And picked uh -oh. up and will be scooped up. Uh-oh, uh-oh. For what will be a Dennis Yarmouth touchdown. Uh-oh. Worst case scenario for Nantucket. No chance uh -oh. for Aguilar there. Or, Looked yeah. like Almonte actually at quarterback. Yeah. A 30 some odd yard return. Brings them right back into it yeah. at 20 to 12. 634 to play. Now there's a lot of time left because you haven't been playing the clock. They're gonna go for I guess you have An to go for point two. Here. You have to go for two. Nope. They're going to kick the extra point. I know. I, it, things are. Which is very interesting. Why? Why bring it to a seven-point game? And another board. player coming on late for DY. <laughs> Lavoy to attempt the extra points. Low snap. And his knee down. Was down. His knee was so down. So no play. No two-point conversion, no extra point, 20 to 12. Yeah, the, the, the hold, score now with 6.34 to play. The holder can have his knee down, but he, he, got up. he got up and then put his knee back down. That can't happen. Nonetheless, interesting happenings on the fumble return for a touchdown by Dennis Yarmouth. The lead now down 20 to 12. And again, we might see a little onside scenario here. We may see it because they're not a strong kicking team. They tried one earlier in the third quarter. And uh, fortunately for Nantucket, it was snuffed out Owen Wilson able to corral it and jump on the ball and 
dive down. Now if you're but, in the uh, now if you're in the and you don't lose this onside kick if they do it, do you try to play the clock or do you go stay back aggressive, to, to yeah. stay aggressive and throw the ball down the field again? But things have gotten a little more interesting here at Vito Capizzo Stadium. 20 to 12, the Nantucket lead. But lots of time left, 6.34 to play. Once again, our fourth quarter sponsored by our friends out west, Madiket Marine. Go out and say hello to my buddy Chris Shannon. If you got any problems with your uh, boat motor. Is, uh, what's her name in the office out there? Jill Ferentella. Jill Ferentella. Yes. One of the ladies in the office. One of the ladies. Yeah. There was another lady I knew out there too. I forget her name now. All right. All right. Here's see. the kickoff, and it is a low onside kick. Fumbled, but gathered up. Once again, Owen Wilson jumps on the ball there. That was a good onside kick. That was much better than the last one, and uh, it almost uh, got away, but Owen Wilson found it. Whalers will take over first and 10 at their own 43. Now we're going to check the play call here. It's going to be a very interesting play call. And let's see who the quarterback is, first of all. Voice is out there. Let's see if they're going to stay aggressive or going to play the clock. I've never seen a game where players are going in so late before the snap. Yeah, right. <laughs> it is Almonte. Behind center in the shotgun formation with Justin Blois. Makai Bodden split out to the far side of the field closest to us. Motion behind Almonte. Run to Blois, shaking and baking. And he's got a nice run for about nine yards. Good, <laughs> thank good. you. Good, good, good play call there. Get keep some, that clock rolling, rolling, rolling. You want to keep the clock moving, and uh, you picked up some nice positive yards. Now you're in a good situation where you can run the ball two more times, keep the clock running. If you don't pick up the first down. No reason to get fancy here. Give it to your most reliable runner. Griffin Fox in the backfield now as well. And it looks like a wildcat. Hand it off to Blois. He cuts it upfield and he's got some room to run. First down run into DY territory at the 40 yard line. So now you got a first down. Now you can run the ball two first more down, times. Whalers. And he keep running the ball. All of a sudden it's going to be under five, under four. And then you're in real good shape. First and 10 at the 40 yard line. Another 13 yards for Justin Blois as he was able to weave his way through the DY defense. Now are we coming up with and one here MVP? It is Bob behind center here. Oh no, that is Almonte, sorry. And he has stopped after a very short game. Which is fine. The clock is running. Keep the clock running, right. Already under five minutes to play. Now, do we come up with one MVP each? Three stars I, each? I think one MVP in general. One MVP in one general. One MVP, yeah. So the pressure's on here. We got four, four and a half minutes to come up with somebody, but uh, I got to hunt you. I'm, I'm, I'm already got somebody circled. Well, what I'm saying is if you roll for one, I roll for the other. How, oh, who, wow. Who's the tiebreaker? I, that's a good point. Maybe we'll have to get Frank in on some of this. Or Charlie can come over and uh, give a vote. We should do the star system, three, two, one. And you, you can... Ah, there you go. Now, we'll Monte figure, we'll figure alone it out. in the backfield. Bodden in motion. He'll get the handoff, try the edge. Got some room. 40, 35, is holding, and out hold, of bounds. Holding on oh, 80. Holding so anyway, so. Yeah, holding on 80. That will also stop the clock and push it back. With 4.13 to play here, and a 20 to 12 Whalers lead. Mistakes now become magnified. Yeah, take him back. He has to take him back. Yeah, coach has got no decision. He got to push him back. Yeah. So that'll be a 10-yard penalty, bringing up second 
Holding against the Raiders. About 17, 18 yards. All the way back to midfield once again. All right, now. Spot foul, so second and 20. Now do you now do you put the ball in the air? Do you keep it on the ground and still play that clock? You can run three more downs here. And get it get it under three and then rely on your defense. Or you can get aggressive and uh, hope you don't get another turnover. Yeah. Again, El Monte in a quarterback now. I don't know if you, you throw it here. Yeah. An inside handout that Griffin Fox play that worked really well. He breaks another tackle. Still on his feet. Rumbling ahead. Inside the 30. Pile being pushed down to the 25 yard line and still going. Wow. First down. Nice run by Griffin Fox. That inside reverse handoff works again. Great call. Great play. Great execution. Everything was right on that one. And that could do it for Wow. Fred. I don't know how many timeouts DY's got, but they got to use them here in a hurry. One left. First and 10 Whalers at the 23 yard line of Dennis Yarmouth. Huge play. 24 yards on the scrambling, rumbling, bumbling. The coach now is asking if the clock is right, and he, oh, this no, official no. is saying the guy in the field has the official time. If the guy in the field has the official time, and that's, the, that's he it. should he should change, but he should change this yeah, clock to match board. his. Oh, fumble! And Amante able to gabble, gather it up and actually whoa, gather a couple. But holy smokes! Almost another huge turnover. All right, so DY uses their timeout. You think it's their last? Let's keep an eye on the officials. Oh, maybe they have another one. I left. haven't seen them count them off, no. Yeah. So that means they have at least one more left. Yeah. So we're going to so work. It must have been Nantucket look that at oh, Nantucket used two of their timeouts. That's what it is. Second and 15. 238 to play. You don't have to score. Nope. You don't have to score, so you don't want you don't want a turnover. And you want the clock to run, so that you, you shouldn't have to throw the ball. Yeah, even a little QB sneak here just to get that clock rolling, Keep the even clock. if it uses their last couple timeouts. Make, here. Yeah, get rid of their timeouts, yeah. So if they do get the ball back. It's, uh, it's, it's, and uh, I don't see Tom Brady on the sideline here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's, it would be Tom Brady time. <clears throat> Almonte going over, getting his final instructions. Backup quarterback Aguilar able to come in and complete a huge 65 yard touchdown pass to put the Whalers up. But he is on the sidelines as of right now. Royce split in this shallow backfield. Motion in front again. Almonte looking for a hole, finds one, sneaks ahead to about the 25 yard line. Perfect play call. Yeah, there's your, quarter, out, there's, your, there's your quarterback run. Okay, timeout. Let's see if he counts them out now. So 239 officially, or maybe unofficially to play. Bringing up a third down and about 12 for the Whalers. But the clock, the big issue now, as the Whalers look to run it out, D.Y. hoping to get one last chance here to tie it up with a touchdown and a two-point conversion. I didn't see them count out the, the, uh, no. the first down. So, I mean, they had the timeout, so. So in theory, they might have one more. Oh, now he made a signal. He just made a signal after yeah. the fact, but it yeah. didn't see the didn't seem to be the uh, out of timeout signal. Third and twelve, two thirty nine to go. I'd like to say hello to our new friends over on the radio side. We're at Scott uh, Vito Capizzo Stadium, and Scott Capizzo's in the booth. That's right. Along with an old friend of mine, Mark Manchester. He's Mark an old worked, friend of mine as well. Mark worked with me for about seven years back in the. Uh, 
the late 90s after I remember the, listening to you guys. The previous mentioned Chris Worth left. There you go. Mark came into the booth. All right, Almonte all alone in the backfield on third and 12. Baden taking, Ooh. oh, nice block on the edge, and Baden will get the edge. Run out of bounds, though, to Baden stop the, the clock. The Short of the first down at about the 18 yard yeah. line. It's, it's, it's Stops the clock with 233. Clock. That's a timeout right it there, saves, basically. It saves a timeout. If Not the wisest move by Baden. Should have just. Go down. You go down. Slide in bounds, but that didn't happen. And the Whalers will face an interesting fourth down with the wind. Field goal would obviously put it away, but. It's a, it's do you a, risk it? It's a, uh, it's a tough situation because you're going to run a field goal back. I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. <laughs> and when you, run a, when you run a field goal back, it's worth yeah. six points as opposed to exactly. running an extra point back. Well, they are going for it here on fourth down. This could put the game away for the Whalers if they can pick up a first down. A game changer. Yeah, now a penalty flag before we even get there. 12 men on the field. Delay they a broke game. the huddle with 12 men on the field. Or delay a game. He called delay a game, but did they, they must have gave him a 30 second countdown oh, while yep. they were still on the yep. sidelines and they didn't, right, there they, you didn't go. they didn't move move their body so back. So now quick fourth enough. and ten. Well now the pass is a big option because it's fourth down anyways. Yeah. So if you don't complete it, the clock's gonna stop one way or the other. We'd stop on the uh, well, changeover. Either way, an incredibly interesting second half of play here. 20 to 12, our score. Fourth down, Whalers need 10 for the first down. Almonte in trouble. And he will be corralled at the 26 yard line. And that will turn it over as the clock continues to run. Oh no, stopped oh, with no, the fourth stops, down turnover. Stops on the uh, changeover. 2.22 right. to play, which in theory, could be enough time for Dennis Yarmouth to go the length of the field here. They need to go 77 yards with a keep, chance to tie it up. You keep mentioning Tom Brady. Tom Brady could score 21, <laughs> 21 points with 222. If he had the timeouts. <laughs> well, there is hope for Dennis Yarmouth here. Nantucket's going to have to come up with a big play. Here. Yeah, it's a one, one score. Whenever you have the ball, and it's a one-score game. You, you got a chance. You, you got a uh, chance. And again, guys coming out. I've never late. seen guys going in so late. Fitzgerald. Gets the snap. Looking deep. Throwing deep. Short. Azor was open, but unable to get the ball there was Fitzgerald. Again, he is throwing into the wind yeah. as yeah. they chose to defer and not take the win in the first half. 2.17 to play, second and 10 for Dennis Yarmouth. But they need more than just a first down here. They need to go the length of the field to even have a chance to tie. They'll also need a two-point conversion as they are down eight points, 20 to 12 here late in the fourth quarter. Again, Azor hobbles out to the wide end of the field. Fitzgerald waits for him to get set. Gets the snap. Quick throw over the middle. Caught. That's going to be enough for a first down. Could be first down yardage indeed. Clock will stop momentarily with the chains. They'll let them no, set. They'll let them. Yes, it does. They should let them set the uh, markers before they start. And Fitzgerald it. once again gets it and throws it out. Incomplete. Clock will stop with the incomplete pass. However, that's almost a blessing in disguise right there. <laughs> 158 to play. Yeah, he, he wouldn't have picked up much on that. No, there was you don't want two Sean or three. Sean Murphy was on the case there. You don't want two or three yard completions now. Yeah, you got to think something, something big here, big chunk, to give him a chance to throw it into the end zone here. Azor not feeling 100% for sure. He has been hobbled with a cramp in his lower leg pretty much the entire fourth quarter. Shotgun formation once again, four wideouts, and it looks like a false start. 
That'll make it second and 15 with the uh, movement. And yeah, that's about their 37th the penalty, right? I have, a, on a, I have unofficially for 13 for 13 105. Penalties, oh my lord. That's going to drive the coach crazy. 13 accepted penalties. Yeah. What I'm seeing though here at the end is, is some of these kids go in late. They go in for a position that's already been covered by yeah. somebody else. Yeah. So then the guy that's in there moves Has to, to another position. Else. So yeah. I'm, I'm saying to myself, it's good they know multiple positions, but they're, they're lining up. Oh, here's out some of more position. motion. See that? They're lining up out of position. More this motion here. Whalers rush forward, bring an extra guy, and another incompletion from Fitzgerald. Pass thrown behind. Yeah, if that passes. The intended receiver, Smith. Again, that's better not caught because if yeah. that's caught, it's it's uh, in the middle of the field. Middle of the field, the clock runs, and it's third and ten. So third down again, and about 16. One fifty-four to play here in the game as the Whalers look to hang on here and pick up a victory to begin the season. Calf's coming from the edge. Pass caught and oh, wow. oh, man, nice play catching, running to the outside and out of bounds inside Whaler territory. Wow, what a play. Once again, David Azor doing things we didn't even know he could do. Had the ball behind his back and then yeah. was able to corral it and bring Some, it up front. Somehow, somehow and he got that from behind the back. Once again down, he's been hobbled with cramps, but picks up a huge first down for Dennis Yarmouth. Another big play. So Azor is off on the Nantucket side of the field. Probably tightened up on that lower leg once again. But Fitzgerald able to connect with him, broke a tackle, and got a huge first down. Ball inside Nantucket territory at the 48-yard line, 146 to play, and got out of bounds as well, which again is basically a timeout at this point. Got to do a special thanks here from NCTV 18 and our entire production staff to Sue and Marty Oliveri uh, doing some very important behind the scenes work with us and uh, kind of rescuing the broadcast here. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much, Sue and Marty Oliveri. Uh, you know, maybe we'll, they'll get a piece of pizza. We, uh... We'll bring a piece of pizza over to them as well. Or if one of our NCTV crew sees them out and about, maybe at fairgrounds, we'll uh, right. you know, <laughs> get them a beverage or two. But first and 10 for Dennis Yarmouth as they still tend to Azor on the Nantucket side of the field. I don't know if they can run a play with him on the other side. Is that, can you do that? If he's on the other side <laughs> of the field or at least he's out of bounds, he right? Does. He has to get up and onto the field. He has to the other side, okay. Man. That is a tough kid, I'll tell you what, senior. Running back and wide out, David Azor. He has the lone score. And he's going to stay in the game, doesn't he have to come out? He's got to come they, out for a play. They got, yeah, but they didn't he take a ready time. to stay in the game, tough kid. He was the lone touchdown score offensively. But there is still life for Dennis Yarmouth as they are now first and 10 inside Whaler territory at the 48 yard line. Fitzgerald looking to make some magic happen here. Gets the snap, back to pass. And another quick out, incomplete pass. Unable to haul in was Jaden Moore. Pretty good throw right on the sideline. That's the smart play. Again, trying to stop the clock with the completion. Unable to complete it though, second and 10, 142 left. Well, they, could, they got plenty of time if they can complete the sidelines and get out of bounds. But a sack will pretty much do them in. A yeah, shot, he's got to get shot, rid of it. A yeah. shot completion. 
uh, won't help either. All right, Fitzgerald brings the offense to the line. Shotgun formation again, four wideouts. Lone single setback. And facing some pressure, Fitzgerald scrambling around. He's got a little bit of room, but in the middle of the field. Yeah, that doesn't help, that doesn't help. <laughs> Gotta get to the line quick. And Fitzgerald coming up limping a little bit. 45 yard line, facing third and about seven. Trying to get players set. 115 and counting. Snap, quick pass, caught. That Again, won't help Azor. Either. That won't help either. Short of the first down, bring it up fourth down. The coach was telling them to down it, I thought, before. Now they can't down Under it. Under a minute fourth. to play here at Vito Capizzo Stadium. The Whalers hanging on to a 20 he, to 12 lead. He can run the ball here because. Fourth down. If you get Fitzgerald the under center. And able to fall forward, which looks like enough. They will stop the clock to maybe measure here. Almost looked like he kind of fumbled, but he, he was like able to corral he, it. It looks like he bobbled it, but he went forward. Probably enough for the first down. They, what they should be doing is lining up. He going to have to measure it, so they're going to give a little Dennis Yarmouth even a more time to get lined up and set up. Quarterback should come over here and get two or three plays from the coach. Yep, 45 seconds to play here in what has turned out to be quite an exciting game. Huge measurement here. Yeah, this will be the end of the game if they didn't make it. If they didn't make it, yeah, Nantucket just It does put look like they got enough for the first down, though. Well, if I was writing the script for this, I'd have D.Y. scoring with one second <laughs> left on the clock <laughs> and then missing Missed the, the extra point. conversion, all extra right. Point. Well, let's knock on some wood. <laughs> Something in that realm doesn't even happen. Don't, we don't get there, but... Uh, all right, they get the first wow. down. He's just enough for ball. the first now, down. Now, D.Y. should have two plays sent in right now, and, and the quarterback so should be. the clock be will start once those chains get set. Looks yeah. like they may try and down it here on first down because that oh, will no. stop the clock. Oh, no, they, they, they can wait. They can wait clock right now. Clock starts. Fitzgerald gets the snap. He is back to pass. Looking deep, throwing deep. His and the flag oh. is down. Yeah, he had his hands up without looking for the ball. That's the penalty. He had his hands up. So that will be at least a 15 yard penalty. You can't, you can't keep your hands up like that without turning around trying to locate the ball. Not very good form by Makai Bodden out there. Again, that's not his best position. Obviously, he is an offensive player first. Is that Bodden or is that Justin? It looked like Makai on that side. All right, so it's just a 15 yarder. So I clock will stop once again. 34 seconds to play here in the game. Ball now resting at the 22 yard line of Nantucket. Dennis Yarmouth with another chance here. Again, trying to throw into that wind. Fitzgerald. Now they can throw a shot. Gets the snap. Rolling, throwing, incomplete. 30 seconds to play. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta throw to the sidelines because unless you get the first down, no, the clock will continue. The clock will continue. If you pick up eight or nine yards in the middle of the field, that's, uh, that that's going to do, do you in. Yeah, that could do it. Got to get the sidelines out of bounds or pick up the first down where they have to reset the uh, pin. Defensive line urging the crowd to get in on it. They are abiding. 30 seconds to play here from Vito Capizzo Stadium. DY second and 10. Blitz coming. Fitzgerald in trouble. Scrambling but will not be able to get out of the pressure. He had a guy in the end zone. And another open. flag. Well, that helps D.Y. Even if the penalty's on D.Y., yeah, it helps because it stops the clock. Somebody spiked the ball. I'm not sure who that was, whether it was Fitzgerald or a Nantucket player got it and spiked it, but 
I can't see Fitzgerald spiking it. Maybe in frustration, but let's see what the call is. Looks like they're marking it off against D.Y. though. He's, he's Dead looking ball that way. unsportsmanlike against Dennis Yarmuth, so he must have gotten up and, and spiked the ball with 20 seconds to play here. That makes it all the more well, that's dire good. for D.Y. as they are now backed up to their own, to the Nantucket 42-yard line. That's their 14th penalty for 120 yards. I mean, you need not look any further than that statistic. Yeah to understand why they are now facing basically a miracle situation here. How long are we going to be on? I'm sure to do something for that. <laughs> so. <laughs> I just texted my wife and told her I'd be late. This game is running long. Running a little long here with the excitement and penalties. The clock penalties. stops every three seconds with the flag. So Fitzgerald now facing a second and basically touchdown. Now the clock says 242. Oh boy, that's not right. 24. They made okay, there we 24 go. 24 seconds. They added four seconds back. 24 seconds to play ball on the 42-yard line. Third down for Dennis Yarmouth and basically a touchdown. Once again, Fitzgerald facing pressure. Scrambles out of it. Gonna throw it, and Bond intercepts it, and that will do it, kids. Fitzgerald tried to do something, but there was nobody open. And Makai Bond able to reach up and corral it for the interception. And now Nantucket could just run one play and get the hard-earned victory. MVP? We agree. We agree. Wow. You know, great minds think alike, <laughs> I guess, right? <laughs> well, we agree on the MVP folks at home. We'll announce it here in seconds, but... Uh, and of course, stay tuned as we will have a little post-game report following the game and uh, another special edition after the game as well on NCTV 18. Downing the ball is Nantucket. And the clock will continue to run. Five, four, three, two, one. And the Whalers have won the game and begin the season with a big victory, hard earned, against a good Dennis Yarmouth team. Yeah, they're excited. Not their over best showing, obviously, but. They're, they're excited over there because they, they, know, they know they did something special today. When you play somebody a couple divisions up and you win the home opener, you are, uh, you earned it. So a big victory here for the uh, Wills. And uh, uh, MVP, is, you give that now or you give we're, it? We'll wait. We're, we're going to hold on to him. All right. So congratulations goes out to the Whalers. So stay tuned as we will bring you a little post-game report here. But a well-earned victory by the Nantucket Whalers. Coach Perry, got to be happy. A win is a win is a win. They made it a little more exciting than it probably needed to be. But hey, we'll take it. The Whalers will move to 1-0 on the season, picking up a victory 20-12. And our post-game report what? Yeah. is presented by 
our favorite catering company, Eight Arms Chef Services with prepared meal delivery, full service catering, and private chef services available. Again, I am Chris Morris. Happy to be coming to you live from Vito Capito Stadium, where the Whalers earned a 20 to 12 victory, going the second half basically with all the scoring. And it was quite exciting. I gotta say, it was a pleasure to hang out with uh, the legend that is Dick Herman. Uh, and offensively, things got going with special teams, which is always a bonus as Justin Blois took a wobbly punt and scored a touchdown. And uh, Makai Bodden then got into the act as he hauled in a long pass, 65 yards for a touchdown, and was also able to get a two-point conversion and then sealed the game with the interception. And uh, he is our Whaler MVP. Again, picking up a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and an interception on defense. Overall, just a great game, great second half uh, from both teams. Uh, quarterback for DY put up some good numbers and really was uh, throwing the ball well, but unfortunately he ran out of time and ultimately uh, threw the interception that sealed the game for the Whalers. Uh, the Whalers will look to make it two in a row against a very good Mashpee team next week. They, of course, lost to uh, Mashpee last year, 33 to nothing, but uh, the Whalers beat them in the playoffs in 2019, 30 to nothing. So this could be the rubber match of uh, the Mashpee Falcons next week off island. Uh, you can join us here on the 25th of September for our next broadcast of the Nantucket Whalers. Uh, that will be... Uh, live coverage coming to you right here from Vito Capizzo Stadium. Once again, I am Chris Morris. Uh, our MVP was uh, none other than Makai Bodden, who went from being the quarterback last year to now a wide receiver. He hauled in a 65-yard touchdown pass and was able to uh, get a two-point conversion and an interception. So he is our Whaler MVP from NCT8, NCTV 18. Once again, thank you for watching Nantucket Community Television's live coverage of Whalers football. We need to extend a heartfelt thanks to all of our sponsors. Your continued support makes this broadcast possible. And we want to give special thanks to our key sponsors, Eight Arm Chef Services, Dune Bar and Restaurant, Vineyard Vines, Nantucket Bank, William Ravis Real Estate, and Madiket Marine. If you'd like to learn more about those businesses, please look in the YouTube description of this video. And if you're interested in sponsoring Whaler Sports, please contact NCTV's Executive Director, Lisa Getter, at lisa at nctv18.org. Got to give a huge thank you to our production crew, led by Frank Shatt, our director, camera operators, Katie O'Connor, Charlie Hoyleman, scoreboard technician, Joseph Costanzo, and of course, more information on the live broadcast can uh, be found on our Facebook page or Instagram. Just follow NCTV18. And if you enjoyed the halftime episode of NCTV's newest original program, Nantucket Life, it is going to be airing immediately following this broadcast. And of course, you can also jump on YouTube and link that whenever you would like. I'm Chris Morris, and for Dick Herman, Many thanks to the NCTV 18 crew and for you for joining us here as Nantucket Whalers pick up a victory 20 to 12.